Welcome to Warcraft Reloaded, a podcast brought to you by Mash Those Buttons, covering World of Warcraft Classic and its community. I am Bobby, also known as Blazing Bob, and today I am joined by Mel, aka Mel Arena. How you doing? I am wonderful. Good to hear, good to hear. And we're also joined by Ryan, aka Cognitive Pit. It's coming to us from Saffron's Lair. How you doing? I'm doing just fine. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to explain why I'm still in Saffron's Lair. <laughs> <laughs> and we are also joined by special guest Mel Duran, who does all kinds of content creation. He's been on the show before, and he's a good friend of the show. Welcome, Mel Duran. Thanks so much, Bob. I uh, love being here and uh, love doing podcasts with you guys, and I'm eager to talk some classic WoW. Heck yeah, heck yeah, because... You know, good Good Morning Azeroth just has has not done as as many shows as of late, and it's yeah it makes me sad because I get so so excited every time one comes out. But you know, he's concentrated on TBC. But I I, I hope those come back to at least back to bi weekly sometime. That's our goal. Yeah. So it's uh, <clears throat> I think we're just taking a little break. Um, I think. Uh, I think the whole classical community is taking a little break right now. Um, so I think it's just time to kind of re revitalize like myself. I've been working on a shaman guide that's um, been taking it's a hundred plus hours so far. It's, it's, wow. it's, wow. yeah, it's, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a good video, I think, and a good guide, but um, it's been good because I have more time for that stuff. So. Yeah, Does yeah. it ever make you mad when you spend so much time on something and then the final product is like such a minuscule amount of that time? <laughs> yeah exactly so the video is going to be an hour and a half or something and and you know yeah you're right it's like holy crap so but if it helps people that's the whole goal of it is to help people sure. and it's it's for the shaman discord it's a collaborative work and you know all that stuff so it looks it's great because when it comes out you're like wow you know we, we did something here which is always nice that's oh, yeah. how the best things get made you know you get you distill all that time and effort down to a perfect final product yeah exactly Yep. And yeah, everybody wants to be a YouTuber or a content creator, but oftentimes until you start doing it, you have no idea how much work it takes to do it well. And for sure, you know, I'm not even saying I do this, you know, podcast well, but it does take a lot of time. <laughs> it, oh, yeah. But yeah, the it last time Melderon and I talked, we were on the con beef before the storm panel with Josh and with Def Camp and it was a good old time. We were supposed to have we were supposed to have Def Camp on the show tonight. He broke his his mic and he doesn't have a new one. He's got one on order, but unfortunately he's not gonna be able to make it today. We hope to have him on sometime in the future, but yeah. yeah well let's let's just go ahead I feel and... like broke my mic is kind of like I have to relace my shoes tonight type of excuse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's uh We'll we'll channel his spirit for sure. We'll do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. He, uh, the best was uh, we were doing the con before the storm panel, <laughs> and he was supposed to host, but he had not really. He didn't catch that part of the information piece, and so Josh is like, "All right, <laughs> Def Camp, take it away." He's like a deer in headlights. Like what? <laughs> yeah, it was so funny to you. <laughs> and I, I actually had no idea either so it wasn't like uh i knew or i would have told him definitely <laughs> so yeah well the josh just i mean man i i aspire to be as good of a host as him he just picks it up takes it and just runs with it and it's almost like he planned the whole show out it was amazing so if you haven't listened yeah. to that you should definitely check it out it was a good time josh is a beast 100 percent. no he's um he is amazing but uh so for, the, so for the show tonight, we're going to go through a little bit of housekeeping. We've got some reviews. We're going to go over what we've been doing in WoW lately. Not really Naxxoramas. We're going to hit Naxxoramas at the end of the show. Um, we're going to follow up on some, you know, some, some, cor some corrections to the last episode where we talked about Nax unique strategies. We're going to talk about a little bit of news, you know, little thing happened in WoW Classic where they're about to get rid of this thing called spell matching. It's not that big of a deal, but we're going to talk about it anyway. <laughs> then we'll move on to the next stuff. If time allows, we might even talk a little bit of TBC. So strap in, hang on, let's do it. Yep, we got some reviews. Yeah, so uh, the first review is on iTunes from Santiago Duper. 
a great substitute for actually playing. Love this podcast. I was recently hit with a big wave of WoW nostalgia, played and rated from 2006 to 2009 as an Alliance tank. I jumped back into WoW by playing Classic for a bit. However, I quickly found out my 10 plus hour workdays and other life responsibilities now get in the way of even leveling a character in vanilla. I still needed a fix for my nostalgia and luckily found this podcast. It has honestly felt like I'm back playing the game. I particularly like the storytelling you guys do. Just good old WoW stories. For example, I recently listened to an episode in which you told the story of a massive PvP fight. Um, One of you started in Felwood. That was me. I I started it. (laughs) Bringing guild buddies and everything after running into an enemy player. Keep up the good work. We're definitely lucky that uh the the kind of no lifers we have in our guild are the most insane pvpers as well too it makes yeah. it super easy for right. them yeah they're like to come to our rescue oh they're you're so in winter excited spring about it too and i'm on the other side of the world be right there yeah. Yeah. yeah they're so excited about it too it's like i've been getting ganked for like 20 they're... minutes and i'm finally fed up enough to put something in guild chat and there's like seven people that are like i'm on my way they're like hold right them there. they're like hold them there <laughs> Bait them. Make make sure they stay. Make make sure they stay. You know they're what they get there. Oh man, it it, it is great. Tell but, me what it's like to have PvP in your server. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually been great. Uh, I mean, we're lucky <clears throat> to have a fifty fifty server. It really mm-hmm. has been great. The Scourge invasion was awesome. Like we'd oh, be bet. fighting for for the nodes, and sometimes you'd win, sometimes you'd lose. It's always fun when it's not up. That's, yeah. that's Bob, not Bob, while the Scourge Invasion was going on, I right. did not ever hear. I don't. I, Bob never I said it. I love the PvP the server. Yeah, no. Oh, no. Definitely not. I was never complaining about the Scourge Invasion with Horde. I was complaining about early on the guilds on Alliance dominating and not letting me get a tag on anything. That's what I was complaining well, about. The too. worst <laughs> is when they're Alliance. We can't kill them. So there's no way to get them out of your zone. Like you can bring as many people as you wanted, but you still can't kill them. It's still a who can click the darn thing fastest. You we know? don't take advantage of this very often, but a couple of our insano PVPers were originally horrid. So there may have been times that we did take advantage of That's that and, and bring true. them to clear out alliance if we needed to. We've kind of moved past that. Unfortunately, since like a lot of just being out in the world is is mostly gone altogether in Classic WoW for a lot of people, just because of how insane it is out in the world. Uh, it might be different on a in like a basically <laughs> not PvP server, but it's, for us, yeah. it's like there's either bots or there's horde, or it's just not even worth it. A lot of the good money making is in instance, and then we're raiding Nax, and that's that's yeah. that. Hey, I go out in the world every week to get my ZG buff. There you go. There you, there you go. You... I take a flight path and everything. <laughs> I go out in the world of Farden Demonic Runes and Frost Small. Uh, yeah, Chillwin Ecos. That's basically on yeah. my main, obviously, on my alts. I play a lot out in the world. But honestly, in Scarum, if you're a horde, you can literally walk away from your keyboard in Fellwood and no one will touch you. Oh my um, God. It's crazy. Like, and and uh, there's Alliance, sure, but they, they all they do is gank or, or they do all they do is world buff grief. That's all they do. So it's about. If you're not getting world buffs, you won't be killed, pretty much. Yeah. It's crazy. It sucks, because we didn't sign up for that, so, you know. Right. Yeah, okay. I'm and hoping we they can fix one that other for review. you. But, sorry, yep, go ahead. No, we have one other review um, from Tuco on Gehanis. Hi, Ryan, Mel, and Bob. Interesting order. An yeah, order I agree with. Order. <laughs> hey, as long as Bob's last, Mel and I that's can true. agree. You always right? got to save the yeah. best for last, right? Yeah, I don't oh. think that's what's happening, but you can tell yourself that, Bob. Go ahead. Uh, so, really says, pillow. it's a really great podcast you have, and it's been entertaining me through my Black Lotus grinds. A slight smile. I'm, I'm happy that you're on a server that you can continue your Black Lotus grind. It is not super possible uh, on our server right now. <laughs> right? And, uh, and now when I've I am leveling my one, Horde Hunter... <laughs> sorry, what's... I've never seen a Black Lotus, ever. I've been an you, herbalist. We, I've we seen one. Occasionally... We've had a couple pop up when we're running to raid. I remember like going to Blackwing Lair and and we found one on the way and got one before. So we, yeah, we, but I didn't them. see it or get it. <laughs> yeah, you do have wow. to play uh, even back in the day quite a bit to to see them. But um, let's see. And and uh, he listens during his Black Lotus grind and while he's leveling his Horde Hunter. Uh, can't. Sorry, this is a little. 
small. Does that say Willie, <laughs> which you had yeah, yeah. on? Oh, yeah, Willie, yeah, which you had on, used Willie's to play guild. in my guild. So I asked him some months ago if he could recommend any good podcast, and this was the first one that came to his mind. Nice. Thank you, Willie. That's so nice. I have been listening to every episode since then and also went back to listen to past episodes. Since next, I'd love to hear about the progression and fun things with Bark Block and Guild, or however it's spelled. Pretty close. Pretty good. <laughs> Uh, I have a guild that pretty much manhandled Nax, so never saw any progression in any raids here. So I'm living through the fun, small stories uh, you tell on the podcast. By the way, we all know and love a bingo in our guilds. That is definitely true. Bingo is is a, <laughs> a, a caricature personified. Uh, I'm currently working on a story for you guys to tell on the podcast, but rating Nax on four characters doesn't leave me much time oh my God. Uh, for that, four? so it will be done when it's done. Thanks a lot for your contribution to the community. Love from EU, Gehennis, Tuco. Four Nax raids a week. Huh? <laughs> I, wow. That I can't I guess these say, though, they're just like rolling through it. <clears throat> I mean, I, I mean, guess if it takes two hours, so it's maybe. like four days a week, maybe. I mean, it, it is. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's, if, if if you have four raid teams that can just do like a three hour clear consistently every time. Could I, you yeah, I mean, the white main. Yes. Yeah, but you're not guild. thinking about. I mean, <laughs> one of the biggest things is just the preparation every week for one character. You know what I mean? All the consumes. Yeah, I mean, if you're clearing oh, it yeah. that fast, you're consuming a ton. It depends on the person too, though. Like we have someone in our guild who just did a GDKP. He earned all of his gold, um, and he spent seventeen thousand gold on a DFT in a GDKP. And like, if I had seventeen thousand gold and I didn't need to go spend it on an item, I wouldn't really be out farming. I could just buy all my mats and consumes. And yeah, world buffing How is a little bit annoying. Seventeen thousand gold, though. <laughs> well, yeah, that takes a lot of time and effort, of course. But if you've been doing it this whole time it's not impossible that he's not, he might not be playing that much more than us. Like we, I'm already putting in a lot of time outside of raid in order to get ready for our singular raid, as far as helping myself, helping other people getting enough gold and consumes for that. But if you're a little more like set up, I mean, he might only be playing 15 hours a week or something, getting through four, uh, Nax raids all together. Yeah. If they have a really strong setup. Yeah. I mean, GDKPs, you can make a ton and you can make a ton off the auction house. If you, if you play it right. And, you know, win on the right things. But if you have enough money, you could afford to take some losses too. So, I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. yeah. If you have the capital, it makes it a lot easier. But I still can't imagine spending 17K on anything. I'd be saving that for three for three of my characters' flying mounts in TBC. Yeah. Yeah, I just could not do it. Yeah. Same thing I would do. Yeah, I mean, people have different different goals and things that they want. And uh, especially in a DKP guild, if you can get something that you're not going to replace for gold outside of raid, definitely helps you with, with some of the other pieces that you want. If classic is your main focus and you, you know, you want whatever might have or you want gristle or you want some, some insano thing that that's going to go for a lot of DKP. It kind of helps to get all your other bits in, in GDKPs. That is, that is true. I can't even imagine having 17,000 gold to be fair. I just don't even know what that looks like. I'm not that high, but I <clears throat> I am doing pretty well uh, right now because I've been prepping for TBC for a very long time, and I'm a healer. Um, I don't have to consume as much. Um, so it, it's, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I spend a lot of time farming. I guess that's what it is. Oh, and yeah. honestly, I, I, I'm very anal about uh, runes. I never use dark runes unless I am out of runes, right? So I farm demonics every week. And I've been saving up dark runes since phase one. And I had like oh, wow. 60 of them. And I made like a mm -hmm. thousand gold in an hour. I just, I, I was yeah. like, I'm, I'm just going to sell these. I, I had no idea they went for so much because I never bought one before. Um, yeah, I just had some from when we were farming something. I don't Nax, remember what. But uh, we... Rep for Nax attunement. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. to hear you right, say that right. though. We were in like a mini argument in our guild, and the healers were trying to say that they consumed just as much as warriors did. And I was trying uh, to explain. I never said that. Wow. I was like, I promise you, you it's, every it's death, night and day. It's night every and day. death is like eighty gold for me. Yeah. Plus, like I'm popping all sorts. I'm popping consumes. You guys haven't even heard of these, like four hundred and fifty yeah. armor elixirs for an hour. It, they're they're seven gold a piece. Like it's just crazy Listen, how much it adds. I up. do have to pop a mage blood potion, and that is like 15 gold oh so that's yeah. one of our i mean mon mongoose is 15 gold 
But right. what even is a Mage Vault potion? How much MP? It's MP5, right? Yeah, it's MP5. Yeah. yeah. Like how much though? Uh, and it's. 10? I mean, it's considerable. I, I pop them every. I pop them every. Okay. Day. Um, yeah. Okay. yeah. It is good. Wondering. Yeah. Because like we have DPS who will cheat on their consumes, and if I were a healer, my instinct is that MP5 is the first thing I'm cheating on, depending on the fight you're going into. Not next. No MP5. Not, yeah, I can see not yeah. next being. Yeah. A... MP5 feel... and AQ is a joke. Yeah. Unless you're speed running, then MP5 has a lot of value. True. I do yeah. cheat on Winterfall Firewater. That's about the only one I cheat on and don't pop mm -hmm. all the time, just because it's. You know the same cost as a, a mongoose, but a mongoose gives you two per like two point two per two point oh two five. I forget. It's two point or it's three percent basically crit. Mm -hmm. So like that's huge. You know, like that's yeah. definitely worth it. But the you know the Winterfall Firewater. If it was five gold a pop, I'd be popping them every time. But it's just not on our server, and so yeah, I do. Yeah, I didn't that. use Mage Blood potions until Nax. Like I didn't need them in anything else. Yeah, yeah there's a different really level don't. of consumes yeah. as well too. Like I'm not going to eat like a desert dumpling every time I die or the, every time the buff goes away because it just doesn't seem like it's going to provide that much. But a mongoose lasts an hour. You're using it on trash. Everything. A fire water though, like you're you're, you're going to lose it in between some bosses sometimes yeah. so it's like i can understand popping it for like the, the bosses it matters for the most but if you're like on like a NuverCon and it's gonna die basically the same amount of time i don't think i don't think it's even reasonable to pop something that costs you 15 gold if it's gonna hurt you later when like oh i can't afford my shadow protection potions anymore but i'm popping fire waters on a like yeah <clears throat> yeah, yeah i have a i have a tank alt that i only leveled because when AQ when AQ twenty and ZG were much more relevant, and we were you know basically our main our our, our main tanks not our main tank but our main tanks of the raid were getting burned out tanking twenty mans. So I had a I had a warrior that was sixty, so I got him geared up to help with twenty man tanking. And the consumable cost versus a healer is night and day. Like it's it's not even oh, yeah. close. Um, you know, stone shield potions, fucking like you know, it's just it's crazy, right? You're popping all so these things um lips faps like anything you you know you're just popping all kinds of stuff so yeah there's there's no comparison in my opinion yeah yeah mine either and i'm i'm yeah. a healer i don't know who you had the discussion with uh yeah yep <laughs> i do love how uh our reviews oftentimes spark convers conversation so thank you for those reviews like they always seem to spark some sort of interesting conversation at least interesting to me hopefully it's interesting to others but <laughs> Let's... I don't even know how we got on that conversation based on that review, but we'll just let that one go. <laughs> well, we always somehow do. Because he raids on four characters. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. How That's can you right. afford it? So what have we been doing lately besides Nax? We're going to talk about Nax later, but pers personally, um, I just started a new rogue character, and I've been playing that. I've been having kind of a good time with that. But what what, what have you guys been doing? Anything besides yeah. Nax prep and Nax? Bob told me he was starting a new character. He's like, I really want a rogue. Do you want to level something with me? And I go, absolutely not. And he goes, I, I can't believe you okay. did three characters already. He goes, well, I just thought I'd ask. I figured the answer was no. I was like, yeah, you definitely, you don't want to wait for me to do ask. that either. You know, you got to float pass. the question at least. Yeah. Um, I have just, outside of uh, doing my, so again, I just do those Scarlet Monastery graveyard runs to to earn some money. Um, and outside of that, I've been recruiting and it's kind of interesting to note. It has not been like what we thought we in our minds. We're like, all these guilds are going to break up and there's going to be like great players who are looking for guilds. Not been the case whatsoever. Mm. Uh, it just seems like most people I talk to who are who are geared and guildless are they all just say they're done raiding pretty much. If they're good and geared, they just they don't want to find a new guild and finish it out, especially if they're 15 of 15 already, and then yeah. their guild breaks apart. We've had the exact I mean, opposite makes... experience, actually. That's really interesting. Really? Yeah. But um, I guess we... we're not 15 of 15, right? So if we oh, right. have a 15 of 15 person that doesn't have a guild anymore, they're like, well, I don't want to go through your guys' progression. Yeah, so we had like the wave of I'm done when we 15 out of 15 from some of our raiders and we picked up people from guilds that hadn't 15 out of 15 and they've been extremely impactful pickups. It's been crazy. Um, so at, we're actually recruitment's a totally different beast now than it was in any other phase of the game for us, at least. And that's just maybe that's because we are 15 out of 15. 
Um, but yeah, it's been exactly the opposite. Yeah. Interesting, but it's interesting. We, but like Scarum had a lot of guilds fall apart though, so maybe that's why. Yeah, we've yeah. we've definitely have had guilds fall apart. Um, yeah. I think we're also being very specific about what we're looking for, which I think doesn't help. It seems like Holy Pally is probably the least played class. I don't have any stats to back that up other than from recruiting, but yeah, finding I've... a guildless <laughs> Holy Pally has been like a, a complete nightmare. Yeah. Um, I think the other major problem that we've been having is that one of the 15 to 15 guilds on our server, which is a pretty good guild, have apparently been bleeding people and they raid the same time we do they're 15 to 15 and they're recruiting right alongside us so oh, it, it's right. hard to convince people like we just you know we just got 13 to 15 last week so you know we've been saying we're 12 to 15 and the week before that we're 11 to 15 so it's been a little hard um, well, just say we're 12 of 15 now 13 of 15 with 35 raiders and you know maybe that'll get up and be like <laughs> and, we just well, need those extra just five to, <laughs> just to interject yep uh on on white main on alliance uh paladin is the least played the third to last fourth to last least played character the only ones played less are hunter warlock and druid so they're definitely less they're 11.4 percent of our server according to ironforgejob.pro yeah. so anybody that so, raids that also <clears throat> includes red paladins right if they actually are able to raid <laughs> it's only yeah, people is. raiding nax so i doubt it's that many red paladins i mean I'm, I'm not an alliance raider but i'm assuming they're also integral too so that's a hard thing as well it's hard to let go of a good paladin so yeah like it makes sense that there's less writing hunters because you just don't bring as many as you would right. paladin so like that's like the big difference as well too like it's easy to find a hunter because the hunters that do exist they they aren't needed and i mean warlocks are good and like druid it makes sense like these are none of these are ever classes that we're specifically looking for it's more like yeah we'll we'll take another hunter or yeah you know i guess we could take a warlock or, or basically not taking druids so it is uh it that that adds up to me hmm. oh wait didn't we get 13 out of 15 last week yeah we got Actually, it last week that. i think we I got 13 and 15 last because i was there yesterday when we got it i wasn't there last week so it really only counts for me careful yesterday. bob will get mad at you if you spoil our next progress <laughs> while we're Sorry. still talking Sorry. about what we did this week spoilers <laughs> but it's recruiting i mean and it's tough for me as well too because most of the free time that I do have are not the ideal hours to be recruiting on our server either. Um, so I think that that can be a big problem as well too. Like I'm often looking earlier in the day when I have free time and being EST on a West coast server <laughs> can, can make it tough. And we rate at horrible hours too, even for West coast. A lot mm. of people don't want to start at 8 PM at night We're we're one of the later rating guilds on our server. It's uh, 10 it's PM at night where I live. And it's 11 p.m. where I live, too. So it, we don't uh, yeah. cater to a lot of people. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, it's interesting perspective uh, hearing different things uh, because it, we also rate 8 to 11. I, I think it's just, I don't know, maybe it's a horde thing. I don't know. A lot, we, but there's a lot more later later raids, I guess, on Scarum. Uh, but it is an East Coast server. That could be why as well. <clears throat> so, but to answer your question, Bob, uh, I would like to also level and all, but unfortunately, I've been doing some TBC prep. That's like what I've been. 100% of my time has been towards. And this is all assuming we have to copy our characters over and TBC's even coming out, right? So I'm hoping that all these things are true. But um, you, as you uh, as you may or may not know, uh, in TBC, you can't have a level five if, uh, enchanting alt. So, and that's not a huge deal, but I do like having my own enchants, mats. So I'm power leveling my mage, who's not... So my mage is 53, and I just never leveled him because I just kind of lost interest but i want to get his engine his enchanting up to 300 so i can at least disenchant most of the gear in tbc that drops so that's been my yeah. goal right now that's one of the yeah i have plethora. a druid that's, uh, or not a druid my mage yeah, is your mage like is 280 pretty. enchanting and i was like bob should i drop enchanting on this mage because i can't even enchant my own gear and that just pisses me off and i was like no no big <laughs> changes coming in tbc yeah oh, yep yeah. But so yeah, now it. <laughs> that's one of the plethora of changes, small changes that are big changes in the grand scheme of things that people just might not know about yet. We'll be covering a lot of those as the weeks go on because there is so many changes. I, there's no way we'd even be able to do an episode where we could tell you all of the changes and discuss them at the same time. We'd have to do an episode where it's just 
and then this changes in 4.1, and then this changes, this changes, you know, it'd be kind of boring. What we'll do is we'll assign homework. Here's your reading assignment before the next episode, and then you can come and we can discuss. I'm just yeah, kidding. <laughs> it's, I mean, it, it, it is almost that nuts, but... Um, an- another thing I wanted to do, I wanted to follow up on the Nash unique strategies because we did make a couple mistakes. It turns out that Lightwell is usable by the entire raid. Still don't think it's <laughs> okay. very useful. Still yeah. horrible. All right. It's usable by five <laughs> people total. So maybe that's what I was thinking. Garbage stuff. Oh, it has Get like five charges. <laughs> yeah. And the funny thing is it's been garbage all throughout WoW's history, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's never been good. Yeah, yeah. it's just I mean, think it was, it was on... like a cool idea. I think at the initial, like in WoW Classic or in Vanilla WoW, I was a druid, by the way, so I don't really know, but I know there was no light wells hanging around. But people tried it at the very beginning. They're like, mm. look at how cool this is. You can heal yourself. <laughs> and then it was like, well, we no. did have a couple no. pocket uses. We used it on in in like wrath our original wrath like i think we did use it for our three drakes up on was that mm. oh obsidian sanctum no that, was that what it was called it was the three drakes and then the one yeah. dragon yeah obsidian yep. sanctum start yep. start with an s the dragon uh yeah you're right i don't I remember the name of the dragon remember, yeah the read was called the obsidian sanctum yeah that place was cool but yeah, we were, guys, were we were like I think the third guild on the server to act to actually do it. I think we used it there, and I think we used it when we did the four bosses up in. Why am I blanking on all the Darth names? Darian? Old uh, Oldaman, Old oh, Olduar, Olduar. Yeah, we did the four yeah. bosses up on Yog uh, uh, Saran, which was a really hard None of that fight. content is even confirmed to be coming out in classic. So true, true, don't true. take light well still. Yeah. The problem the problem is 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 Wow had put out this little article and it's like you can you can sapper all the Feralina trash and that's nuts. And you know ah. you can the, you can use the recombobulator or, or whatever it's called. And that's actually been helping us a lot uh, with the healers who have engineering on Lotheb to get literally just an extra like fifteen hundred heal whenever you want in addition to your normal heal for low thip has been insanely useful. And then it's like, yeah, and grab light. Well, too. Like, <laughs> but so hold the... on. I think I figured out last week or not. I did not figure this out because I'm not engineering, but somebody said that the recombobulator shares a cooldown with something that they need. And I can't remember what it is. If it's the like shadow protection pot or something like that makes no sense in my could, head right could now. Could be the health stone. Out loud. Could be yeah, the might house. be the health oh, zone. No. Yes, yeah, it looks like it's health. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what it is. Oh, yeah, um, actually, I don't think that, that is. So, so if you were that, planning that on using it, so Therian, it, though, thank if you. Were you. Yeah. It, then you should. Well, and then one of the other um, strategies was having a druid. Uh, take all the aggro of the zombie chow on Gluth, and a guy pointed out that shaman's even better. If but you know, if you're mm-hmm. a horde, shaman could even get more. But then someone on Reddit pointed out we could use a paladin doing blessing of kings spam, yeah, and just yeah. that sounded like the best idea that I have heard so far. Yeah, so we use a combination of mage, druid, shaman. Uh, so we have shaman with earthbind totem. We have a druid constantly hotting himself. And then we have mages freezing and AOEing and stuff. Yeah. I love right. how Bob says the paladin's the best idea when Yip's been like, there are no paladins on the server. <laughs> well, and I they mean, can bubble themselves too, right? So I guess, but, but yeah. it, you lose aggro when you bubble, right? Yeah, Full. you do. Yeah, you lose yeah. aggro if you bubble. Yeah. yeah, I mean, those are all... Uh, great ideas. I think right now we're using just a mage and a warrior who is piercing howl so that they're putting applying mm-hmm. a slow every time and then they can grab aggro if some crazy stuff happens and, and drag stuff back as Let's well. Let's not too, act like Gluth is our I mean, most successful boss for some odd reason. Yeah, Gluth we struggle with the most for some reason. I think it's just because everything is so simple and we're great at making like tiny mistakes so like when a tiny mistake happens it, it can kind of ruin everything like oh the mages are just gonna pull gluth and then he's gonna run out to the zombie chow like that's yeah. not nom, ideal nom, 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 nom. <laughs> not a lot you can either even do there either to to fix the problem like uh, that yeah. uh once uh, it's then, happened and then another thing we had a a uh, listener on on youtube leave a comment that he was saying 
that that on the Fairlita trash they were using a limp <clears throat> and not an invisibility potion. Now we looked into this. The Wowhead link was definitely the Chinese guild using invisibility potions. Maybe a lip would work too, but I mean a lip only protects you from uh from uh physical damage, yeah right? from physical damage and uh, so maybe so the it would only cut the, the only reason off. yeah the only reason you would use a lip i assume is because you know let's say you have this paladin or you have someone petrified with all the aggro mm -hmm. if you lip and then sapper you don't immediately get aggro well, that would be my assumption there is it'll still just stay on whoever originally aggroed because you're not causing any threat uh well i guess like i i guess but i mean i don't i mean th the thing they were referencing was invisibility potions i'm sure lip uh works as well too but if everything is dying all at once i don't know why you'd have to use any of of those things either way right couldn't you just run in and sapper if they're all gonna die so have you seen onslaught's new strat for this we have not so they, they did it last week when they're at speed run 10th unfortunately they, they had some issues but on this fight that was really super cool they have one person run in pull the trash or the pet tree then the entire raid, every 39 other people, they all in Vizpot, they run up to the clump and they sapper and kill everything in once. It's okay, crazy. that's actually yeah, exactly so that's what, what we talked about. about. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what we yeah. talked about last week, but somebody said that there people are lipping and not invisibility. Um so oh, it's definitely invis. Like, yeah, yeah, and I think, I think it is yeah. invis. I think the big point of the invis is like, yes, the lip will help you not get aggro maybe for a few seconds, but the mobs are going to move as you run in because the lip only lasts for six seconds where an invisibility pod lasts for 18 seconds. Mm -hmm. If your paladin's bubbling, getting aggro, he really has no aggro except that he's the only person the mobs can see. Correct. So the invisibility pod allows you to get close, clumped up, and then boom. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, pal the paladin version also seems super sketch because you're still working within a much smaller time frame where if you're flask of petrifying, you have like, a while to make sure everybody is like you let everything clump up and then you can still invisibility pot you have time to move in and then sap all at once so i think that that is just like the clear better way to do it i would love i would love to do that i hate that trash so much i hate it where too. it's just so it's, it's so, just so sketchy it's annoying there's stupid line of sight issues with like all the little like uneven terrain that's super annoying yeah, and then the kicks are annoying because you don't want to do anything that's on the global cooldown list so as a warrior i'm just heroic striking because i want to make sure that my global cooldown's up so that i can kick immediately rather than being like oh i missed it because i just use blood i just use bloodthirst and you know so okay last time when is you longer don't than the kick, GCD, though. when you don't kick is that when people get stunned and that's when everyone gets uh, a shadow lot of bolted. damage yeah. taken. They get shadow oh, bolted. Okay, what everyone... stuns me or like knocks it, me back? It knocks, or it knocks you like it moves you around. I don't know yeah. what that is. So that's yeah. the arcane explosion. So okay, well, they that also one's cast super arcane annoying. And yeah. sometimes it happens a lot. And sometimes well, it happens like once. I don't know if I just suck or like if there's aggro <laughs> reset mechanics or what, but like I cannot hold aggro on these freaking arcane explosioners. Like I'll grab them. And then, like, they're just running back to the healers more again. Like, yeah, I'll thunder yeah. three times, they're back to the healers again. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, so, the, like Mel said, the terrain is, is the problem. Because we, we have our melee clump in one clump. We have everyone else clumped somewhere else. But what happens is the melee, this happens every week. They're like, oh, I have to zug. And they run farther away, and they get oh. a little bit under, under a lip, right? <clears throat> and then the healers all have to move up. And then we get pushed around because of the thing, and it happens. If, if the melee can just stay still and wait for the mobs to get to them, it would be fine. But they just never do, dude. And you it's can't just expect like, melee yeah. to do things like that. Come on. I don't think we even try to get our melee to do that. We just we yeah. we shoot them, we pull back, and then whatever happens after that, we just leave up to to chance. <laughs> the line of sight is just annoying because it's so. It just doesn't make logical sense, right? It's like I can be standing on top of a rock. And there's somebody below me, and it's like not in line of sight. And I'm like, really? I yeah. can see him. Like, I don't understand yeah. why you can't. Yeah, it is. It is definitely weird. But I, but I wanted to just clear that up really quick. A couple things. But right now, let's move on to the news. 
So we got a little bit of news this week, just one thing, but it's uh, the PTR is hit and the change on the PTR is basically no more spell batching or it moved to like such a minuscule number that it doesn't matter. For anybody that doesn't know what spell batching is, basically it's simulated lag or latency. It's Many moves and interactions and spells in the game are subject to spell batching, and it's a 400 millisecond uh, timer. And basically what that means is those moves are as if you were on 400 ping, which most people are probably under 100 ping connecting to the servers, if not even less. And so... What feels clunky about it, I think, to me, is that most, you know, half your game doesn't run at 400 ping and half of it does. And that's why I think those different interactions are clunky. But it's basically being moved right now from 400 milliseconds to 10. So virtually instant. What do you guys think? Listen, I've said this before, but the whole, like, push for no changes, I don't think anybody thought that meant let's emulate dial-up internet yeah like come on (laughs) that was nobody there are certain things that you don't want to change and then there are certain things that you're like this wasn't even you like that was just our internet was bad and i don't want to have bad internet again i've lived my whole life without bad internet now so let's leave it well i mean people were praising it in the beginning People loved the okay, idea. Well, those people I don't know about. Eh, little question. Yeah, I wasn't praising it. I was <laughs> I was a very no changes person in the beginning. Um, I was like, what? <laughs> and the and the leeway thing too. I hate. I don't know why that's the one. But, <laughs> melee leeway. Yeah. So I thought. So from a healer perspective, hey, Bob, I love to hear how all this is going to affect melee because I actually don't know. But from a healer perspective, the only thing that really changes for us, well, two things. One, <clears throat> you won't get that. Um, Mel, I know you know this. You you heal the person, but they die. Maybe that's mm-hmm. going to be limited. I don't know. You see the heal go off, and the right. person dies, right? So I don't know if that's going to be limited. I don't know if we're going to be able to save people quicker, or they're going to die quicker. I don't know which one it is. But the other thing is, is like, hope it, we it, save them. Yeah, I hope we save them. <laughs> but the other thing is like the uh, so drink walking is not it's not a big thing, but like uh, for raids that go fast, uh, and we do this too, is if you have a the, so there's a two second server tick. Everything everything is governed by the server tick. Uh, rage accumulation, energy accumulation, combat dropping or entering. It's all done on the server tick, right? So also mana regen happens on the server tick. So it's like two seconds. Every two seconds, you'll see this little tick. And when you're, if you're able to like, say your drink is on your hotkey, your mage water or whatever is a healer. You if you have an add on that tracks it, and I have like a little circular orb that moves like this the whole time. And if you hit your drink button when it's like 90% through, you'll get a drink. Like you'll get a tick of drinks. So you can actually keep running and drink at the same time. Now you burn through your mana. You burn through your drinks because every time you do it, it's a drink. Um, but it's a way for speed runners and, and people who move a little bit quicker to keep drinking while running. And there's been Our some talking are about... way too stingy for us to do that. Yeah, right. I, I, I know. Trust me. It, it's, it's a fight every week. But like... So uh, there's been talk that it's still possible because they have people been testing this in the PTR, but it's a lot more clunky and it's going to be harder to do. So that's one thing I know is that's going to be uh, affected by this for sure. If um, I can interject with just a side note, uh, 15 minutes before we fly out for Nax, every week I open nonstop portals to Ironforge and give out infinite water to any healers that want them. Our healers choose not to take more water. I want to throw that out there. I know for well, a fact... You have never offered me water. I I am always standing there with water. Healers choose not to take it. That is uh, I would that's the reality it. of the situation. I literally have to wait for Tubble to get into the raid to give me more than yeah, like You one take my port water. every week, but you just don't t- trade me for water for some reason. Well, I didn't realize. <laughs> I'm not in the like, water mindset Listen. yet, right? I'm like... Getting I'm all just my saying, I heard some shade everything. thrown at our mages, but no, our I've mages traded plenty fine. of healers who only, for some reason, have two slots open for water. When Listen, uh, it's because we have to have a lot of consumes, okay? And because I don't know which ones I need and which ones I don't need that day, so I've got, like, this bag, this rainbow-filled bag of consumes with, like, frost and fire and nature and arcane and everything else under the sun. 
I'm a tank with three sets of gear and more consumes than anybody else. Okay, uh, but I also have to bring like <clears throat> 200 candles. Okay. Well, this is going to help the situation because I, I don't know what it'll feel like, but in the article that got put out, finally, trading people won't be as horribly clunky, apparently. Oh, nice. Apparently, the reason all this hor all the UI stuff like buying and selling and opening mail and trading has been horribly clunky because of this the whole time. Yeah, it was So they said it's going to be fixed. Why Absolutely. that was ever on the spell batching list is beyond me. Well, I think it's just everything is, right? Have you like, ever gone to inspect somebody and yes. then it shows up like five <laughs> minutes later and it like pops up with their character screen and you're like, what is that? It's so annoying. Yeah, I yeah. feel like so that's details trying to pull up their spec and then failing oh. and then not working. I feel like that's what think, that problem is. I think is. it happens no add-ons also. Oh, I, mean, really? I might be crazy, but I'm pretty sure it's just like super janky um, all the time. But uh, for us, for Melee, specifically Warriors, I don't know exactly how it'll be like for Rogues. Maybe there'll be a big difference for Rogues. But for Warriors, I think this is probably a, a pretty big change. Um, one is Taunt. Uh, going off instantly, which which this article we link also points out, because uh, right now it it batches with everything else when you're trying to taunt something. Mm -hmm. So no matter how sly you are, you're still at the mercy of uh, that 400 milliseconds. And then execute is really the one that warriors are going to notice immediately. Execute has been the worst feeling execute button in the history of all of wow it's unbelievable how horrible it feels to execute things anything like trash you literally can't even execute most of the time just mm. because it, it dies in this weird time frame and you're not on gcd and you're hitting execute but you'll just do no damage to that mob as it dies and, and it's so frustrating still lose all of the rage to and also just for rage generation, it happens immediately now instead of going right. over the server tick, which feels really good because rogues, you know, are getting, you know, their energy at the server tick. So I don't know mm -hmm. if it was as noticeable, but for us, like rage is so wishy-washy and now it, it really comes back quickly. And I think this change is going to be huge for PVP too. I mean... PvP oh, yeah. is going to feel a lot different, and I'm kind of excited to try that out, too. So what's really interesting is the, I'm sure you Alliance know, the Chain Lightning EM combo. I'm sure you know that pretty well from Sean. Oh, yeah. um, so now what's interesting is in vanilla, that worked that way, you, that you could do that. Uh, and then TBC, it was actually patched out, so they knew that was a problem. So my question is, I haven't gone to the PTR, so I'm a little lazy, but is that removed do you guys know like can you still do the chain lightning em combo or or sorry chain lightning earth shot combo with Le elemental mastery uh, i don't know this article yeah, states that you can okay yeah. excellent that's all well, good i'm glad about that <laughs> as long as you guys still have that well, we can we can get rid of spell batching yeah because i'm because i'm glad because it, it goes away in tbc i guess is what i'm saying like it's good that it's still in vanilla i guess is what i mean yeah. Well, and yeah. and they yeah. state that the the mages can still pull off double shatters too, the double shatter combo. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. The the other big thing, uh, just to clarify more too with execute is when something has low health. I said it's annoying, but also when things don't have low health, normally you just want to hit execute every time you have ten rage. But the way it works now is your rage doesn't just creep up to ten. It'll just be like, oh, you're batch, and now you have forty rage to spend. You didn't have, you didn't ever get to that ten point to hit it, and then use the ten four oh. times. You're you're trying to execute, and it just is waiting. Well, the server is waiting. Yeah, and then if you're world buffed, you'll go from sometimes like thirty rage to one hundred, and you might be losing some or some rage that you got during that tick. Also, yeah. Hmm. Basically, it's about time. You know, warriors have been struggling all of classic. Oh, we needed yeah. a little boost. <laughs> God. So yeah, I know it's is, been hard. Is, is point one the retail? Like, is that what retail's on? Do you guys know? Uh, point one millisecond spell batch window. Is that like what what it yes. is in live? Since okay. warlords, they have been on. But from my understanding, the spell batch window was not four hundred in vanilla. Wow, it was something more around two fifty, which would have been oh. similar. And that's probably why it didn't feel so clunky back <laughs> in the day because mm. your entire experience was on that similar, you know, latency, whereas now it's, you know, 
you're it's just clunky because you're like well this is slowed by this but this isn't you know like that's why it's so weird yeah i mean they sold it to us in a way that sounded cool like they would give a bunch of like pvp interactions that you can't get anymore because it only happened in, in vanilla wow but all it's really internet. doing is unoptimizing people's play it's making people's gameplay feel worse like i think everybody at this point hates ball batching i think I mean, I want to say this is like too little too late. It seems odd that they're even doing this now. But I also think that this is not something they're trying to change right now either. I know it's on the PTR right now, but I don't think we're going to see this until the TBC pre-patch. Like, I don't think that this is something they're trying to implement next week so that people can start enjoying classic. You think? And I was telling Bob, I was telling Bob this in DMs. I was like, I think this is this is an arena pre-prep. Like, I think this is all for arena and or fresh. Fresh Realms, obviously, like Fresh Classic. I think that's also, I don't think we can pull a confirmation of that from this, but I think we can, I think it teases TBC big time. Yeah, Yeah, at least TBC. Yeah. Yeah. I think too, though, you have to look at that they also want to make sure that people are invested in the game before TBC comes out, right? And there's a lot of people kind of dropping off right now. And so you bring something like this back, maybe you test it in the Classic servers at the end of Classic, just so that it's good for tbc and it gets people to come back into classic to see how it feels and do all of that that's a good and then maybe they go on to tbc it's an easy way to just make big news because people who haven't played for a while are going to see this and be like oh i'd like to check that out yeah it is i mean it, it it is kind of big i think that the next thing we'll be seeing testing is melee leeway i'm pretty sure I hope so, because like I hope that's not an arena. God, you know. Yeah, yeah, it'd be horrible. I mean, it's going to fundamentally change a lot. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And then there's other things like people were scared that not everybody, you know, whole guild's not going to be able to get Songflower. The article says that it's still going to be doable, but it says it's still be doable if everybody spam clicking it when it spawns. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it's still going to be doable when everybody's, you know, when you set a DBM timer and everybody clicks at the end of the DBM right. timer. I'm I'm curious about that. I think that that will be nearly impossible to do it that way because you'll have to, because before it was like your reaction to the situation would have to fall within that 400 milliseconds and you're fine. I think that if you're doing a DBM timer, your reaction time has to be within that 10 milliseconds for it to actually mm. come off and work. But if you're doing it on spawn, know there's that one person that's going to anticipate oh, yeah. it too ahead of time. And then nobody else is going to get it. <laughs> yep. I think yep. is, is spawn is spawn meta though. Like for me, at least I only ever get song flower now. Um, even alone when Songflower is about to come up off spawn. I don't like, you don't really find them just like sitting there waiting and then taking your time to time it. So sometimes we do only because like I said, the only land center server is based around world buff griefing. So the blood venom Songflower is the one in the horde flight path. Um, so that's the go-to for the horde, but because of the, you know, issues with the Alliance griefers, we actually have to sometimes go to different flowers. Um, so when we cleanse it, we have to do the DBM thing, but all subsequent flowers is on the it's on the yeah. refresh show. So for that first one, it might be a little tricky. Yeah. Some reason yeah. I, I mean, can't it remember. Sorry. What, what, say it again, Bob. Uh, I said I can't remember where the horde flight path in Fellwood is for some reason. I'm if you follow like the river that kind of shoots in the middle of the zone, you go up and it um uh it's like on a cliff face. And if if you fall off the cliff, you're in Dark Shore. Oh um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, huh. um, so we do have yeah. It's yours is in the north. Yeah, the way uh, north corner. Ours, ours is in the middle of the zone. Yeah. Oh, if you follow the river west. Yeah. Kind of by Jade Fire. Uh, a little north of there. So it's between Jade Fire and like it's between the, basically it's between the Seder groups. So there's like the okay. the Seders are north and south, and there's a river that kind of cuts Fellwood in half. And if you go west in that river, that's where the Horde flight path is. Yeah, it's very un- it's unfortunately time. very convenient for horror. <laughs> yeah, there's a fl- there's a song flower inside of inside the town basically. We have oh, we have one that's yeah. really convenient too, but like yeah. as far as like 
like like like the the review said i was telling a story even just getting like reinforcements in takes a lot longer just because we're oh, way boy. north tucked away and then trying to get somewhere it can be pretty frustrating yeah. good point yeah but either way i think everybody's pretty excited about this change i'm excited about everything that it's going to do and just it's further excites me for pvp going into tbc yeah, I mean, this change, this is like one of those changes that I think is required for me to ever enjoy a fresh classic server. Like, I don't, like, there need to be changes like this <laughs> where it's going to be yeah. a little more fun mm -hmm. next time around. There seems like there's going to be a reason to play it. So how do you guys feel about the, how do you guys feel if there's a fresh, how do you guys feel about removing world buffs or keeping them in? Just out of curiosity. Oh, I'd love them removed completely, yeah. Or You say that, but you wouldn't be a warrior if they were removed. No, I would be a, I'd, I would be a rogue if they were right. removed but at the same time if they're gonna keep them in i would rather you know i would honestly for fresh i would rather it be a shorter stint you know either like you know double gear three month you know raid tiers i think sounds like the best option to me and then if you're gonna do world mm. buffs i want it to be some sort of gold <clears throat> sink where someone pays a bunch of gold and the buff drops, you know, like that could be something that so, could be cool. Right. So the way private servers did it, some private servers, not all, was the double loot's actually really good. I like that idea. Um, never even thought of that. But the they'll have it, they'll have world buffs come out for like the first two weeks of a raid tier, then they'll remove them. How do you feel about uh, that? Hmm, That's interesting, interesting because on retail, I feel so I don't think they would ever do it. I don't think Blizzard would ever do it because I think historically Blizzard does the opposite. So mm -hmm. you would yeah. have no world buffs available for the first month, and then you can start bringing world buffs in to make mm. sure people can get the content clear. To like, I mean, I, ICC had was it like a, every week you would get an increasing buff? Am I crazy? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, like they 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 really want people to see the content and finish it. So I think it would if they were going to do anything, it would be the opposite. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I like the damage that you do with world buffs. I think it makes the raids a lot more accessible. Like we use world buffs now pretty. I think almost everyone in our guilds getting world buffs and we are still struggling in that. So when I think yeah. about guilds that are worse than ours, it's probably it probably gets pretty daunting to not, you know, to go oh. through without world buffs. Why not uh, make them so that they're purchasable like a flask or something you know what i mean like i know that that's not the idea of world buffs but if you still want to have the classes play similarly as they would in vanilla but not have to camp out in zg island to wait for a heart to drop then why not make it so you can go just like we do with the zanzas and purchase it Everybody has to pay a little bit of gold for it. It goes into the well bank, not into somebody else's pocket. Well, yeah, that was what I was saying. Some sort of gold sink, whether an individual buys it or a guild buys it for a big amount of money and it goes to all of Stormwind or all of... Yeah, there'd have to be a cooldown. Like, you couldn't just, like, leave and come back and leave and come back and just keep buying world buffs. Like, if it was, like, yeah. once once yeah. per 20 runs per reset, you can go at the... Even just... At the beginning of a raid, you can pay this dude X money, you get buffed, but you can you can't until server resets again. Then I mean, like, it could sure, be like the Darkmoon Fair buff though, where like you have to have so many yeah, hours log out in to yeah. purchase it again. You know, it's I think that's idea. fair. Yeah, or, I mean, and fun. it probably limits it to one, right? Like you can only have one, just like the Zanzas. You can only have one Zanza on you at a time. You make Trying a to really pop it and buy another one. Yeah, you make a really good point with the, with the cooldown. It would have to have some sort of dark mood fair cooldown because if not, yeah. the meta would just be as soon as you die, go eat your buffs. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the way to do. It. I think Mel hit, hit hit on the head. I think that's how you do it. So I was one hundred percent against world buffs coming back it, until I got in the next. And yeah. I think <laughs> you you hit the nail on the head too. It really helps guilds progress. So I think the way to do it would be to you know i don't maybe release them before uh, whenever you decide if they keep them in they could keep them in you know whatever but i think honestly it should be an npc in your major city you get all the buffs and then they're non-dispellable because yeah here's the issue world buffs have become consumables and <laughs> and you can't dispel a consumable right and I, so it's like it's one of those things where 
And I'd argue that's not real PvP. It's just griefing. That's all it oh, is, yeah. right? And being a jerk. I, yeah, exactly, right? So I think if you're going to make them part of the game, make them an actual part of the game, like make them something you can get, like you said, with a four-hour cooldown or 12 hours logged out, whatever it is, you go, you go into the raid, you have no chance of it being dispelled, and you just have fun, right? And I think that's the way to keep them in if you're going to keep them in. But I think you only bring it for. I think you only bring them in for next. I think because the other content is so face roll. Like MC, yep. like we we did a we did a, like a, uh, one of the guys in my raid did did a, a, a retrospective on Classic WoW recently. He's, he's he's still working on it. MC is so nerfed because there's because of the talents. Like it's crazy. Warriors didn't even have um, what was it? They didn't have like certain abilities. They didn't have in patch one point one. Uh, there's uh. Uh, mages didn't have um anyway I, I i'm forgetting and i'm not doing a good job with this but basically the mc was so easy because we were so overpowered um and so so i don't gear yeah. too you know just and like we gear. talked about on the gear. you know yeah. panel like the i mean the gearing lots of items that were plate had like tons of spirit and int on them you know like there was yeah. all kinds of weird stuff going on so I, I think I think that's the way to do it. Like I, I think it, my personal opinion is, if you're going to keep them in, uh, bring them out when Nax comes out, make them non-dispellable, make them have a cooldown, and I think that's how you do it. Personally, because I don't think you need them for the other raid tiers. To be honest, I really don't. I mean, yeah, some no, guild maybe do. You definitely don't. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. never been a boss where I feel like we just need buffs, and what we're running into with like Saffron. Um, I don't think it's as crazy for like Lotheb, but I'm sure for a lot of guilds like Lotheb and Four Horsemen and stuff, yeah. they become totally different fights when your whole raid is is world yep. buffed and you plan your route, you know, patchwork. Like you're planning, are we plan our route around bringing world buffs to patchwork and things like that? So yep. it is way more extreme for Nax. Before it'd be like, ah, you know, if if we wipe to the first pull in AQ, it's annoying, but yeah. it doesn't hinder us clearing the entire raid it's just it's just a little slower than it normally would be. i agree and that recapitulates vanilla right because that's when people started to really notice world buffs was in next that's when people started to get them and we see yeah. that over and over again from historical things we've seen right that's when people were like man we need to get these things yep and i think that's when they should be brought out they should be brought out for next and i think that's if they're going to do fresh fresh classic and again make them undispellable i don't it, it's not pvp in my opinion it's just griefing at that point so yeah and i mean yeah. most of them are not just dis dispellable why are the dm buffs the ones that are you know like why not because they're just... magic oh and yeah i don't song know flower yeah. is that just song flower yeah yeah any magical anything anything you hover over in your buff bar that says magic is dispellable gotcha yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i mean it's it makes sense like why it just naturally in the game because you yeah. know it's a magic effect someone's casting on but it is just it it doesn't it's not fun and it's something that you kind of need at this point as well too and i think that it could on a server like ours i'm okay if there's 40 people who want to camp outside dax and like try to fight us as we get our way in i don't i've never really had a big problem with that but when it's just like oh there are shamans at light Tope chapel who are yep. just suiciding and purging our buffs this is not there's nothing I can do about this. We're just going to lose some buffs and and that's that. I think that's way different. If someone wants to show up with some force and try to take our buffs, okay. Like like yeah, you know. I consider that PvP. That's you yeah. know, and and you, and you can't you and then everyone's like, well, how can you say one is and one isn't? Well, then make them undispellable. Like that's the thing, right? Like yep. that's the best way to do if it. You can kill me and it goes away, fine. Yes, but if correct. you can just from a safe spot spam dispel on me and it goes away like that's not fair 100 percent. that's when i, I have no you. way to yeah. defend myself against that yep yep if you want to build a force to kill another 40 man raid okay that's pvp right right yep. and that's yeah yeah, uh, that's yeah. A good point. yeah I, I totally agree but it, it just at, the, at this it's just, at this stage it isn't fun I mean, even getting them isn't fun. I think you have no. to change the way that you get them because it's just ridiculous spending so much time flying to these different places, logging your character out for such a long period of time, trying to save them. It, yep. it just becomes like this whole extra metagame that no one really signed up for. I think that you would assume that with how intense retail rating is, like that would be where maybe you'd have to have world buffs and stuff and classic rating is just like why is this extra thing outside of raid causing me so much stress and grief and time when there's just yeah. no <laughs> there's no reason
literally yeah. nothing was better than when I realized, or I think Bob told me that you could get the ZG buff when you were dead. Yeah. I was like, huh, yeah, you can get it while changer. dead. Wow, yeah, you that. can get it while dead, resin the water and hearth underwater. Yeah. And avoid. You need I mean, to I guess that's, on the see, that's probably not even relevant to you. That's probably not even relevant to you, though, because you don't have like, we've got like 80 horde on the island like just waiting to kill me <laughs> well i mean yeah, to we be fair it goes both ways sometimes there's 80 alliance on the island no just there's depends. not that's absolutely Literally never no nope. i've never seen never that. so here's here's <laughs> how it i works. have seen we it. own we own booty bay and horde own the island period mm. like bob what bob's talking about is <laughs> when a raid goes yes they can clear the horde. Yeah. like we did that the other night when we wanted heart we all ran there and we cleared them, but we don't stay there. <laughs> the yeah. horde will have raids that sit there waiting to murder Alliance wow. all yeah. day, every day. Yeah, that's so, me. That's the me. Just griefing. Yeah. We got the so short the end of that stick, yep, because they Zanzas. get to buy their Sansas and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, we definitely get the short end, but they also have the system for it. They have summoners on the top of the hut that summon people for free there. Like they have a system that's better than ours. There's a reason they own the island and we don't. Like they did put in the work to have that infrastructure to do it. The problem is the Zanzas because if you want to optimize, you should pop a Zanza and then take another then, Zanza. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, yeah, the death which I thing literally rarely can do. Because... It's almost impossible. So yeah. the death thing helps with that. So if you die, what I do is the night before I'll run to the Zanza Stellar. I'll die there. And then I'll log in at like a somewhat off hour. I will, uh, or when a heart is going to drop at least, I will get the heart while dead. I will immediately res on top of the Zanza guy. And then I will, <laughs> I'll quickly pop the Zanza, grab the other Zanza and start hearthing. And because they're on top of the hut, they usually don't notice in time for me to escape. Mm -hmm. It's a little silly I have to do it that way. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, it's useful. You can get it while dead. So if you're having troubles too, but <laughs> yeah, our say, horde just owned the island. I will say the weirdest thing happened to me the other day. Uh, we finished raid on a Tuesday. I went I was headed to go buy my Zanza before I got on the flight path. Ani dropped. I was like, oh, well, I'm going to lose it because I need to get my Zanza. I go to the island from uh, from uh, Sentinel Hill. I'm following like 40 horde that are in a that are that are in a guild. And I'm like, oh, great. And so I just keep following them. I go right behind them. They're all they drop the heart. I'm right there in the middle of all of them. Just the token alliance guy just chilling here. I go buy my Zanza, pop it, buy another Zanza, Hearth. I get a bunch of waves, and then I get out. I mean, wow. 40 of them there, and nobody even mind control messed with me. I got like three waves, one cheer, and then I was out. I was like, what just Dude, happened? I'm pretty sure no. he woke me up to tell me this story. I'm pretty yeah. sure I was sleeping, and he was like, no, no. You had and just gone like, to bed. <laughs> I was like, what? The reason that can happen, and I've, out of rage, I've done sort of the opposite thing, but you can take advantage of this. So if in the white main discord, I, I don't even know if I want to say this so people don't do this, but you could suggest that you have a heart to drop and then the horde will not kill you. Like you can just tell them you're going to drop a heart and then they'll tell everyone who's there not to kill X and Y yeah. person. I've never done that in order to get my Zanzas because I think it kind of like immediately will ruin your reputation. But out of rage before, after getting ganked a bunch on the island, I pretended like that's what I was trying to do and then said I'm not dropping it now because of the horde just so they felt a little bad because I was just so angry. I just want my double Zanzas <laughs> and they wouldn't let me uh, do it. I was just so, I was so like, oh, confused. No heart now for you guys. <laughs> I was so confused. Like, it's like they were just messing with me, but I was like, well, cool. And then I had, I was like, well, now all I got to do is DM. It was, it was super sweet. At this yeah. point though, I feel like it's almost worse if I don't die because then when a heart does drop, like I'm waiting there. Right. And I'm like, great. Somebody's going to kill me. And then they're going to drop the heart while I'm running back to my dead body. And I'm not going to get it. Cause you don't get it until you're on the Island. Yep. <laughs> and I'm like, yep. Uh, that's why I think there should be NPCs as soon as the next comes out. They're in the major cities. They give you the buffs. Now, the world buffs still exist. You can still get them, obviously, right? You can still do the ZG heart. You can still do the... But they will wipe off you when you enter a raid. That's that's what I've always called for. Like mm. They still exist in the game. You can use them for leveling, for PvP, for dungeons. They're still fun to get, but they wipe off with a raid. And then I think the only exception would be next. Once next comes out, 
They patch in some NPCs in the major city. You can get them. They become undispellable. They are they're just, they can be dispellable before Nax, but they become undispellable. And I think that's a fun way to keep them in the game. But yeah, yeah, I, like and I think that. that goes on what you were saying, uh, uh, cognitive is like that's what Blizzard would do, right? They would bring out a buffer or harder raid more than yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They yeah. they want more people to see content, and I think no yeah. one was having issues seeing the previous raid tiers. Like, at least they, I don't think so. Maybe there I mean, are. Yeah, but, yeah, some people might have been having some issues seeing the yeah. raid tier, but I also don't think that like I mean, even if you think about AQ, I don't think if you're struggling on like Oro or if you're struggling on Cthulhu, I think that's okay. If you're a guild that just can't kill the final boss, I think that's fine. But if you're struggling on like the profit at the beginning. It's like you you just need to like reorient yourself with the game or something. Yeah, like these bosses were not extraordinarily difficult um, bosses. Some of them, you know, Cthulhu, like if you're dying to Cthulhu, that's fine. Like it's okay for some guilds not to be able to kill the last boss immediately. Like I think that that's yeah, fine. But with that, Nax, yeah. some people are like, they can't get past Patchwork with world buffs. There are guilds who are still stuck. And that's exactly. tough. <laughs> and that's the point, right? And and like you said, Cthulhu, once you get the don't stand too close to each other, you know. Kill the kill the things in the stomach. Like any I think any I think any guild with you know average just leadership skills should be able to get Cthulhu down eventually. You know, whereas Patrick, like you said, to me, Nax belongs in TBC. It, like as far as like it's a totally different tier of rating compared to what we've experienced sure. prior to this. And um yeah, and, and 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 some bosses, like you said, are kind of world buff immune. Like early on, Loethib's almost is pretty low, is kind of world buff immune because, like, yeah, you get a lot more attack pace than, but your crit, your you can get you get those crit from the spores, right? So you're pretty much yeah. crit cap with the spores. So it's not it's not really it's really a healer thing. It's not really a well, DPS. I mean, yeah, DPS and, is involved. But, well, and same yeah. with uh, same with. Uh, Thaddeus, um, on, yeah, that... like on Thaddeus, I've beat like my entire guild that had that still had their world buffs, and I didn't just because the buffs are so much that it just kind of negates the world buff yeah. as long as I'm oh, right. can, you know, can, oh, consume. when you get the uh chaining, uh, yeah. I'm a healer, so I don't really feel that. <laughs> I know, and I was like, if what? you get yeah. lucky enough to be behind Thaddeus for the majority of the fight because that's a huge difference right. in DPS yep. for melee. Because you get the parry, yeah. And and your and your parry hasting Thaddeus too for the tank. That that's always fun. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I wonder I don't I don't know if I would have enjoyed Nax as much DPSing as I do tanking when I think about it. Because as much as I would love to be like, yeah, doing sick parses it's been nice that that hasn't even been the focus because we're so worried about getting bosses down as a whole. Like it's nice to get every, like we didn't have uh, our main tank for patchwork this week. And we were very like worried. We're scared mm -hmm. and getting it down still was like a huge achievement. No deaths. We got it down missing our main tank. That's awesome. Nice. And nice. like, I don't know if I would care like, Oh, but I didn't purple parse. Oh, I didn't get a legendary part. Like, I don't, I'm glad I'm not like that right now. And I can just enjoy I'm tanking. We're making sure things get done. Right. And I'm just glad that, that we died. Yeah. I don't need to focus well, on parsing in Nax. There's a ton of factors in Nax. Like I just mentioned with, with, with Thaddeus that change how well you can parse and it would, it'd be sometimes so frustrating. you just yeah. Sometimes you just can't parse. Like when we were missing our main tank for patch, like I had like there was many times I had to go easy on DPS and I had to just white hit when I had full rage, which is a huge DPS loss. But it's something you have to do, you know. And yeah. So in Nax, it's really you know it's fun when you get the good parse, but usually it's you know not something you can really control. And with everybody else getting every single world buff like parsing has been really hard like i'm hitting like high 80s but i'm not getting the the you know mid 90s i was getting everywhere else before yeah it's I way more like fun parsing, focusing on just killing bosses yeah, yeah parsing something you do when like or something you look at when you're like just farming the content right yeah it's that's like what makes i it think still what fun. keeps people motivated to continue to do the same content when they don't need as much from it but before then, like when you're, and I guess we just haven't experienced this before Nax because things were on farm after week one, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, there were a couple bosses here and there that maybe it took us a week to get down, <laughs> but it wasn't anything crazy. Like we wouldn't be this far into BWL, not have down the whole thing. Right. And I think still, 
Like, it's still nerve-wracking every time we're going to, like, Lotheb, making sure nobody dies, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or like, it's and that's like, how you know a raid uh, is good, right? That, that, that right. to me, is the point where when parsing becomes the only challenge and, and, and excitement from a raid, you know it's not, it's not tuned well. And, that, and that's, in my opinion, right? Nax is the type of raid, and you're right, and we're 15 out of 15, and we go into these fights, and I'm still like, oh, my God. Like, patchwork, I'm like, okay, I've got to make sure I – that's good, right? I don't care right. what my parses are because I enjoy the content. Right. And that's and that's why Nax is so cool. But isn't yeah. some of your – like, some of my nerves come from world buffs. And the yeah. fact that if I let somebody die <laughs> – Yes. Okay, I thought you meant your own world buffs. Yeah, you're absolutely right. right. It's someone else's world buffs, yeah, that yeah. I Yeah, and so yeah. – that I think gives the content on a positive note for world buffs. I think that that kind of gives us an extra sense of urgency and like, I don't know, it makes it more nerve wracking yeah. because if they die, those are gone. It, those aren't something you can just pop again for another 15 gold. Correct. Yeah. As a healer, the only thing we get out of world buffs is we get more base stats, which more intellect is great. We get more crit, which is good for Shaman because we proc, and you're a priest, right, Mill? Yeah. So you proc inspiration. We, we Shaman had the same yep. thing. So so that helps big time, right? But I'd rather lose my world buffs than a tank or a DPS. For sure. You know? And oh, that's, yeah. And that's the, that's the thing of a healer is that you got to make sure you're, you're, and that's the stress. Is the real stress comes from not letting your uh, people die for the Zeta 1. I, I do actually yeah. like that, that part about world buffs because this is the yes. first raid tier where we are optimizing. And this has kind of been a problem that we've had that we'll do AQ like one way and we'll lose people in certain places. And like, it just doesn't matter that much that we don't improve ourselves. We don't say, okay, why don't we change up the strat here? Why don't we do these pulls this way? And we've never really changed what we do, but in Nax, like, okay, we're losing people on these spider pack pulls with the mm -hmm. Venom Stalkers. Let's, we, we entirely in the last couple of weeks changed the way that we're doing them. Now no one's dying on this. Yeah, so and that yeah, sort yeah. of stuff is what we're doing. <laughs> the way we pull the, the patchwork guys, um, right before patchwork, the yeah. abominations, you know, they're stunning everybody. We pull them across now instead of running into them all. And like, we've, we've just doing, we're just doing all these things differently and trying to optimize so we don't lose people. And I enjoy that aspect of it as well, too, because even the farm right. content, we're still trying to perfect so that we don't lose people because yep. of world buffs. I, I think uh, world buffs actually became cool in next. And I think you're absolutely yeah. right. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. All right. Well, we kind of already moved into discussion, but now we're going <laughs> to officially, for my bumper's sake, move to discussion. And <laughs> I don't know how to tackle this, guys. Like, I want to do our Vark Flock and Nax progress, but I really want to hear about Melderon and Def Camp's Nax progression. So maybe we should just go through ours real quick here and then go through Melderon's. Yeah. And Melderon can kind of, like, with, you know, kind of interject with different things with our Nax progression. Too. Yeah, even even in the pre the pre podcast conversation, we we're already learning <laughs> how I to know, improve right? and, and, and issues that we're finding out. So. Our progression is going just fine. The only big notable thing is that we've now done uh, four horsemen with no world buffs whatsoever, which is mm -hmm. really right. actually important to our progress. That was because... a huge. Well, that was the second huge thing we did this week, but the first one was we oh, dropped... doing Lothab on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. So we dropped Lothab on Tuesday, which is also before what we were doing is hitting Lothab and four horsemen with fresh world buffs on Thursday on our second raid night, and mm -hmm. that worked fine we pretty much always still lose a few people on lotheb um just i don't i honestly don't even know why but they're we not do following their consumed thing uh, yeah they're not following their <laughs> that, that has to be the only yeah, <laughs> way they're yeah. dying um so we still lose a couple people there but we were able to we've been kind of hesitant or afraid to go through Hygen because we always lose people there as well too and then going to lotheb kind of seemed like all right are we just throwing our world buffs and as we were approaching lotheb some people felt like that we're like oh we're trying lotheb even though we have like an hour left on our world buffs we're just gonna lose them and here. still didn't but have no. 40. yeah we still don't have 40 which is another scary thing we're pretty much always going in with like 37 max which is not great um but we lotheb was easy like i think we're at the point where lotheb just he just goes down for us. We have everything down. I was proud of myself. My my ability to say letters in the row that in the way that they appear <laughs> alphabetically, I was very impressed with. Normally, I'm calling spore groups like A group, B group, C group, D group, F group, F group, 
wait, who who's up next? And like, I need me. help yeah, from people, but me. but finally, I I was I was able to get those letters pretty much down, and uh, everyone did their jobs really well. I think the the is it the recombobulator? Is that what the healers are using? Um, it it helps. It it does like fifteen hundred extra healing. Oh uh, no! Nice. Yeah, and they, yeah, they yeah, just have to use it when they don't need to use their health stone. Which you shouldn't actually need to use your health stone. I, I don't know, think. but if you're anticipating, like, thinking you're going to use your health stone instead of something else. Yeah, that's, something, that's like, definitely something oh, to think crap. about. We didn't know that previously, but we haven't had any issues with, like, corpse dying for that reason. So that was cool to do that on Tuesday. Um, I think more ideally, though, and the reason I say that the four horsemen without world buffs is more important is because four horsemen... Uh, doing four horsemen on a Tuesday, I think is even better than doing Lothab on a Tuesday, because if all we have to do is Lothab, we come in, we clear it, and then we bring our world buffs to Saffron is a lot <laughs> easier where we're going to, we, even on a good four horsemen kill, we are losing so many people still. Uh, well, we just can't that. do it without losing a ton of people. Well, let me stop and, I stayed you alive quick, for though. four horsemen kill. So Ooh. yeah, yeah, that, that always feels good when you're up at the end, but so just to like, just to put this into perspective for others, we did we finished everything except for the four horsemen on Tuesday. And then we went in fully buffed for four horse, but we only had 35 people. And yep. we're like, do we, you know, we, we went through trash hoping others would show up. We only had one person say that they, they weren't coming. And it, it was very frustrating because you're just like, okay, all right, well, but, you know, we get there. We got 35 people. I think we did get 36 after the first poll, but then yeah, we, we go ended up in. having a, a, our fourth tank come in. Who, uh... Yeah, we go in like fully buffed, and it just everything goes to hell. We had a new we tried warrior. Zerg strat. Yeah, we tried the Zerg strat. We had a new warrior. Things went to hell. We wiped like like morale. You could feel it went down, but leadership kept us together. We did get 36. We're like, all right, well, we're going to learn how to do this fight for for real. And so we did it. I don't know. What did we try? Three times? And then the fourth we did it? Or was it on the third that we actually did it with no world buffs, which felt good? Yeah, we didn't have too many wipes. I think it was like yeah, the fourth Yeah, I think it was try. the third. Like the problem the is we, we had a poll in the middle where someone just like pulled and we mm -hmm. wiped again even though we didn't have a real attempt so i, I think that was what makes doors. it feel worse um yeah i mean i wanted to learn it without zerging so the, the strat we're talking about is we just everyone piles on thane and we kill thane really quick get him out of the way and then we just have the other three horsemen to do we still tried it because despite i'm gonna argue with people and i was arguing with officers about this we were not missing any dps compared to our first kill when we killed thane i know it feels bad to be missing five people but we were at like 37 last time and it was like we we're missing a healer. We weren't missing like a ton of DPS or anything. So that's why we decided to do the, the Zerg strat as well. Um, but it's nice to do it the normal way and know we can do it without world buffs. Because now when we bring world buffs, we can just do it that way. And we're going to be fine and probably lose a lot less people and not have to risk it on, on Zerging Thane. So that's really, really good for us. It's going to make it easier for us to move on to Saffron, which we one did thing, do. Wait, one thing about four horsemen that we did discover was that the healers sometimes were not moving all the way over to their sides and taking stacks of from two different horsemen yeah remember that so just a heads up make sure you're all the way and i think it was on the one in the back right that you have to be far away from the other people what what's that one's name? Uh, I don't that remember. would be Sir V. Like it's Zeliac. Or Sir Sir Z. I call it the back to <laughs> Lady B and Sir Z. Yeah. But Zeliac is one that you have to spread out, but you can't spread out into Lady B's zone. Yeah, well, well you just yeah, can't so get hit with the chain. Yeah, you nope. shouldn't so like it's uh, listen, I, I love our healers. They're great at healing. But I don't know why we coddle them so much. It's like we're trying to baby them so that they don't have to learn. Next. That's why we run into these problems. Like, we're just going to yell red, green, blue, and, like, everyone's going to... But it's like, obviously, you can't be in the middle of two zones. Like, anyone who's not a healer knows that. 
Okay. But because we try to coddle our healer mechanics so much, they don't like we have to learn this like the second and third night we're doing four horsemen because like we don't want to tell you guys the real mechanics. We just want to like try to make it easier for you guys. Hey, 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 hey. I mean, no, yeah, I'm not blaming the healers. Not, but it's not okay. So in my head, this room is split into four zones, right? And I get that they're circles, but if I'm standing more than halfway from, in, okay, to be fair, this didn't happen to me, but no, it did not. I will defend. If I'm standing in the, there's that pillar in the middle, right? If I'm standing more than halfway in from the middle of that pillar, I feel like I am in the next zone. Sure. But we do have like, like, so on our first attempts of, four horsemen we put up diagrams of these overlapping circles we talk about right. where the safe spot is there's a reason there's only one safe spot on one side i'm just saying we actually that i don't we actually as tags we actually since i start the taking on lady b i actually pull a lady b up quite a bit more left just because i want serve serve v to have more area for you to spread out so i actually pull them like or pull her like way over to the left compared to where the other tanks are actually taken. So but maybe the, it's Bob fault. Bob messed up the circle overlap, and so no, now Bob just helps gonna... the circle overlap <laughs> for kidding. you. I'm me. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can, I'm, I'd be happy to. We can, we can post a link to the to the circles. But there, the reason there's only one safe spot is because all the circles do overlap a good portion. Um, but it's like, we don't, we don't fully explain everything. And I think this is like a leadership thing, not a, the heal where the healers don't know what they're doing thing. It's just, we try to dumb stuff down before people understand the fight. So like we have healers who are standing at max range away from the tank on Zeliac Cause they're just trying to be as far away from the tank as possible. No reason to do that. That's not how the okay, chain lightning works. They did tell us to do that initially. Right, but that's what I mean. So, like, we're we're not actually explaining mechanics. We're just, like, giving orders. And I think that that's a problem with a very mechanic-intense fight. Because if we just tell you, only move when you hear the word green, we're not giving you, like, the agency why? in order to do the fight properly. Is, so that's okay. why I don't think it's good to, like, coddle certain classes. I think that's why it's good that we did it the bad way without buffs because now everyone has a much better idea of what we need to do going forward like everyone is, understands the fight a lot better is sir v's chain is that range five is or range v. 10 10 it's range so it's it's 10 so you stand 11 away from each other but if but it, it does it, it hits the tank so if you're 11 away from the tank it won't hit you um so what healers Wait, are supposed so we don't to have do, to be 11 away from each other so you might as long think, as no one gets yeah as long right as long as no one gets as long as none of you each other get close enough to the tank to get that chain yeah. then the yes. reason the you do stand is the tank swap yeah the, so the problem is the tank swap and then you don't want to stand that close to each other either because if like one person gets too close to the tank you're all going to get chained and die so you do still want to stand away from each other but what you don't need to do is be like um at the pillar you can be between where the ranged are at max distance. Healers can be in the middle, like toward the tank. And then you have the tank up front and maybe one melee DPS too. the way that we're doing it sometimes um, works as well, too. And it's like, I think that it's important to give people the agency to to come up with this. That's why I really didn't like the way we were just like, oh, just follow the weak or just do this and that. And we don't we don't want to give the time to explain anything. I think it's just better when every individual person has an understanding of what they need to do and why. Um, and that's why we had our our original four horsemen kill fell apart so easily, because once we only had two horsemen left, because people didn't fully understand how the fight worked, they didn't understand how to handle only two horsemen being up. So they didn't understand that they still had to, like, wait for their stacks to come off in the safe spot. They didn't understand that, like, they have to coordinate with the other people who are still alive to make sure that they're they're moving. So I, we're in a much better position now going forward to do well, more horsemen. And pretty to much be however. fair, like, I always say to be fair, I got to stop doing that. But I struggle with knowing when I should come in as a tank after now, you know, when we only have two two of the back bosses up because corpse or exec are going in. I'm like, oh, well, that, you know, that's definitely no, better. Well, well, what you did was fine though. Just having just calling it like yeah, I just okay, called. Hey, I could go in person. for so and so. I'll replace so and so. Exactly. As long as yeah, there's someone to do it, do. it's fine. Like it doesn't matter how much it falls apart. Really, the way we're doing it. Um, 
Listen, so, the healers did that too, okay? Because that's because they're awesome yes, as well. Yes, you did, you did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely killed it. But I think what, what helped is because the way, like, people couldn't do that the week prior. And now that they are more familiar with the fight and know the mechanics, and it's not just, like, dumbed down to, like, yelling color names and stuff like that, healers were able to fit into that super well. And, like, we didn't lose anybody. One, we didn't lose anybody once the, the first two horsemen were down. Everyone was able to stay alive and, and get it done. So that was really But I awesome. do think if you give everybody all of that information day one yeah it just goes over their head 95 percent of it goes over their yeah. head right because yeah. i think the reason that we understand it better now is because we're a very much learn by experience type of group <laughs> yeah. and when something doesn't work and we die then we're like Oh, that's what you meant by the overlapping. Yeah, circles. yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, Horseman uh, uh, is a mechanically <laughs> complicated fight. Um, so I, I don't, I, I, we have not wiped more on Four Horsemen than I was expecting. Like of all of our wipes combined to get these kills, I thought it would be a harder experience for us. So I'm super happy with how we did. Well, um, I then, think wiping is normal. Yeah, and you have all the tanks that don't normally tank, like me, you know. And I reminded tanks before the fight, hey, just remember, always disarm on cooldown. And then Corpse was like, and also remember to do the uh, demoralizing shout. And I was like, oh my God, I totally forgot to do demoralizing shout because I never take. And so that helped a ton too, you know, just people remembering to do these extra moves that they do on I mean, cooldown, you know? It's important for, like, off tanks learn this very quickly. If you are not really, if you're not tanking what the DPS are on, you literally can just sit there, you demoralizing shout you're sundering and you're spamming shield block because there's really no reason for you to build up a ton of threat because threat lasts so while yeah. everyone else is fighting these other mobs you're just trying to mitigate how much damage you can do mm -hmm. and the back tanks don't need to do anything except mitigate damage so the which healers is, don't need to heal you a which lot. is so backwards for a dps yeah. thinking we're like i need to be doing something what well, like why am i not doing yep. more damage just you staying, know but you need to be doing live. things it kind of, it's like yeah patchwork is good practice for that because it's literally like you're getting so much rage from the hateful strikes you all you're just like okay i'm hitting shield block every time like i just need to, <laughs> to on cooldown be, be hitting that um yeah, and you get so a that, threat bonus from the hatefuls too which is really nice yeah yeah the hatefuls yeah. make it so much easier <laughs> yeah. uh so then we go to saffron and we don't do super well the the big changes that we've done i talked about what changes i wanted to implement i think last week and we implemented those changes and it pretty much cured us of a lot of the problems that we're having so, so what wait, we were doing is for the doing last what were you guys doing last week so for the fly up we were having everybody run to the north side of the room and then spreading there and what that meant was all mm. the healers were not healing for about 10 seconds <laughs> while we're all running into place and then everyone's almost dead as these ice bolts start flying down and it was it was a, it was just super messy it took a lot of time now we're still splitting up groups we have a left and a right group we're just spreading in place so the healers can sit there and still heal and then everyone can just kind of spread around them so they can still keep their groups up and then we're right there ready to keep going we were doing this like mm -hmm. real crazy thing we're running to one side and it just was not working for us at all um having everyone in their frost res gear everyone popping pots made a really big difference and what we did is we did a couple you know runs without world buffs we went to get heart we went to get ani as well too but there was a griefer there who notoriously does not let the ani head get reset so we couldn't be we just decided not to go for the ani head we had some some yep. so issues our, there our guildy who you know we have a few guildies that have like actual quite a bit of horde characters because they basically started horde and then came to our guild because of different uh friendships they have with people in the guild but yeah i still think though zilzag did say that he talked to him i still think we could have probably got that buff but yeah we just didn't want we just didn't want to waste like an, we don't want to waste like 30 minutes doing this and and trying to do it so we just wanted to go get the heart we get the heart we get stanzas and then we have basically a 20 percent attempt with a lot of still stupid mistakes in there we've got a couple people just dying to blizzards just standing and in them still and still only them. 36 people and still only 36 people so and we're down a healer too which is like pretty much the worst we're at 12 healers for saffron which i think is like really 
it would be nice if we had a, a couple more healers, which is the plan. We should normally have like an extra priest in there. So we we did really strongly. And I think if we can get a saffron attempt where we're fully world buffed, we have everything down to do that. We just have to go ahead and do that. So how we approach next week is going to be a lot easier. We're going to be able to bring more world buffs to saffron and uh, saffron's 100% going down next week. I have no right. doubt in my mind that that's going to happen. Even yeah. if we have to stop and go get world buffs again, even if we have to go to Dire Mall to get world buffs, we have nothing else to do in our three hours except get Saffron down. So, like, there's no reason yeah. not to spend that time doing it if it means we can get attempts on KT. Well, and Listen, in my first... Hold on, let me tell you really fast because we were talking about the ice blocks. My first time that we did the ice blocks, so I was healing, and then the ice blocks went out, and they're like, okay, go hide. And I was like, okay. And I'm just like, in my line of sight, there's one to my right. And I'm like running over there. And I'm like, God, this is so far away. And I literally realized there was one right behind me to the left <laughs> when I get to the one on the right. And I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, those are problems that just resolve themselves after a couple of attempts. Like it was your first night. We were all doing that our first night. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, it, it okay, 360 view, Melissa. Make sure you get to the one closest to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but something that Melderon pointed out before the uh, podcast started was that the parry range of Saffron is actually really, really large. And I went ahead and looked at our logs and Saffron is getting parry hasted a ton and just double and triple hitting our main tank consistently and constantly during this fight. So that's something else that we can pay attention to. So we looked at our logs and it was like 100 that was the difference. Um, and he went into the warrior and rogue channels and was like, you guys need to stop doing this. Like right now, <laughs> you know, he's like, hey, you know, and, and, um, and the next attempt was, it was so much easier. Hit. It was like crazy, you know, and that just means that there's less healing. that needs to go on the tank and more on the raid. And, and if your heals are able to heal a tank through that, then that's great, but it's just less crap to deal with. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. what I was thinking initially, like, okay, we're yeah. not actually having that many main tank damage problems, but that's yeah. because the healers are having to switch to the main tank when they could mm -hmm. be healing other people. So Correct. it's like a compounding issue. It's like a chain to chain to chain to why we're wiping. And it's because, you know, if healers have to spend more time on the main tank, less time on their group, and it well, just falls apart from there over time. So. Saffron has a ginormous hitbox, like a yeah. ginormous hitbox that you could stand like you know f i think 15 feet or yards or whatever is the range you can stand so back. far back yeah yeah i mean if, if you're taking her right in the middle you can stand on that green circle that's in the middle of the room which is just it, it's unbelievable you'll stand where you think melee range is and then mm -hmm. it's double that still <laughs> yeah it's, it's absurd they did they probably did that to make it easy i mean she's, she's huge but i think they also did that to help with uh, blizzards right otherwise yeah, yeah. it'd be almost impossible yeah. melee would be I, yeah melee well, would be very very difficult and i mean even just taking account how large this this parry range seems to be even that alone might end up being very difficult because i'm thinking about i've probably have been a reason these parries have been happening and <laughs> I, I think do end up i would have been up the, I, I'm I, like, I oh, I'm not, known. yeah yeah i think like i'm not getting cleaved so I'm, i must be okay here but right and yeah. that's the thing is that we looked at that too and we we actually knew this before but we didn't put the two and two together uh, Saffron's cleave is not a frontal cone; it's a chain lightning. So basically, she cleaves the main tank, and anyone it's in a certain range of the main tank then gets chained. It's not a frontal sweep, so that's why you can you can get you could still parry but not be cleaved. Yeah, well, and I, I think wonder it's, I think if Veil's like... the same way like that, right? Veil does the same thing where it's a chain off the main tank. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yes, just like Veil. Fail, but they are a lot smaller, so it's a little easier <laughs> yeah, to be yeah, like yeah. on that back leg. Something that 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 I do wonder though is, as a DPS, you know, as a melee DPS, you're always trying to do DPS. But I saw a lot of people, if they couldn't find a spot out of the blizzard, they were still DPSing while in the blizzard. And I think in this fight, if you can't find a spot that's not getting tail swiped or not, uh, Pairing, or, yeah. yeah, or not pairing the tank. I think you just stand out until you can DPS because with as healing intensive as it is, taking that that you know AOE uh, blizzard damage is just not the way to go. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I realized yeah. really quickly because I was casting a prayer of healing because 
my whole group was low. And it was like so close to being done. And it's a longer cast. It feels like an eternity when I'm casting it. And it's like so close to being done. And the blizzard pops on me. And I was like, I can finish this. And it was like, boom, I'm dead. Oh, and, and then like, another oh. thing is the decurses. Like we had, I think it was Horror's card that said, listen, like, if the decurse needs to go, stop casting. Okay, it was IDD. Stop yes. casting and decurse. So the effective yeah. DPS that a that a priest, uh, sorry, or a mage or a druid does, or effective healing by decursing is like you'll never be able to DPS that much. You just save. Like so, don't cast. Just stop de decurse because not only is it damage to your raiders, but you're healing the boss. So it's like right. the amount of DPS or healing per second you could have you, you could do. If you don't decurse, it will never compete with decursing. And the second thing is, is that Prayer of Healing is the only heal in the game, not even Chain Heal does this, that you can heal people within ice blocks. So mm -hmm. if someone in your group is in an ice block and you cast Prayer of Healing, you actually can heal them. It's the only heal. We don't, I don't think we knew that until right now. I, I thought, I think we all thought it was impossible because there are many times where people are <laughs> popping out with like 10% health and we're just like yeah. letting that happen. That's oh, really wow. interesting. Okay, that is cool. They also <laughs> have to be in range of the priest in their correct group. you have to be in range yeah. hopefully the way we're spreading is usually the way we happen. do it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> as long yep. as i don't run to the other side of the room to get behind the other ice block but you know well I, yeah. that's the reason i think that the splitting on two sides of the rooms is actually the way to go is just because sometimes on one side of the room melee just shouldn't be dpsing that was kind of what i was getting to when i pointed that out earlier and that's why everybody going to one side of the room could really screw you because you might have an entire phase where the melee DPS just can't hit. Yeah. The so Sav, uh, we do, we do a very different strategy, but, <clears throat> but that's for a couple of reasons. So the first reason, so we do one side of the room. Um, we do during, so during ground phase, the reason why we do one side is because shaman healing is completely ineffective if we're on two sides because we have the chain heal. So we that's one reason we do one side. So we have a melee clump and a range clump. And the only time we ever move is we move as a unit as the blizzards move. Uh, and we and the totems. So paladins, their aura, they're the they're the totem. Uh, and shamans, our totem is stationary. So we have to have really tight groups for the fire for frost resistance and for chain heal the second so during air phase what we do is everyone has a buddy um and everyone stacks with their buddy and everyone uses one side of the room and that's how we do air phase now the problem with that strategy is if you don't have world buffs uh this the effect of stamina is much lower so you can actually be killed by the the frost bolt, the frost bolts that come down so it's a great strategy for world buffs. If you guys get to that point, I would suggest it. Um, you will, obviously. You'll get to a point where you have world buffs on staff. It's just a lot easier to heal uh, when everyone's on one side of the room and and stuff like that. But but for non-world buff, we haven't, like I said, we haven't done staff without world buffs yet. So we're considering either spreading that idea out and using the back of the room a little bit better, or we're going to have to split. But again, if we split, shamans are pretty much screwed. So it's kind of... and. And we have to worry about totem management, and it's just it's 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 a little bit of an issue with horde. Um, so it's yeah. interesting to hear. Do you guys have it tougher? Yeah. Do you guys have Does it chain healing tougher? go across groups? Yes, it it's not okay. limited by group, which is really nice. Uh, that's what makes it one of the most amazing heals in the game. But yeah. uh, unfortunately, it's limited. It's so it's a twelve point five yards. So um, the range of chain heals is like every other heal. It's like whatever healing range is, 40 yards or whatever. You, right. you, can, you can shoot the chain heal, but the bounces are limited by 12 and a half yards. So uh, bounce one could go to a person that's 12 and a half yards away, and then bounce two is another 12 and a half. Um, so it can chain pretty far, if, but the problem is, is right. that it's a smart heal, so we can't direct it at all. So it goes to whoever has the, the highest health deficit. Um, so once it leaves our hand, we have no, we really don't know where it's going to go, kind of thing. So choosing a primary target is really important, and the fact that it doesn't heal people in ice blocks, so it won't chain to an ice block unit. Um, it, it, it's the game where shaman are kind of screwed, which is interesting because mm -hmm. shaman are really powerful in the horde. That's why we have such huge melee comps because of wind fury totem because of chain heal. But right. um, yeah, so it, it's a it's a different strategy for horde for sure. And Horde does have a tougher time. There's way more Alliance uh, guilds that have cleared Nax versus Horde, even now. 
Um, yeah, and it's, Sal yeah. Valley was basically just telling us that that's straight up paladins. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Blessing of Salvation is so powerful. Uh, they have the most mana efficiency out of any other healer because they have illumination. They have they have frost resistance, which is on them, not on not on a totem. Uh, I think the list goes on. Like they're, they're just kings, really really powerful. I mean, kings. A blessing of kings. With, yeah, with yeah. world buffs is yeah, an absurd scale. Yeah. amount of yeah. of stats. Exactly. Yeah, and they're just they're great at. So I think it wasn't Sal who said this. It was actually someone else. But I think it's the most eloquent way of putting it. If there was a computer, what's that? I don't know that computer that beats up that did chess or whatever. Like yeah. you know, yep, quantum yeah. chess. Solver. Yeah, yeah. If, we talked about we, this on the panel. I oh, that's right. That's right. If we had a computer that was like, you know, uh, supercomputing, machine learning, it would always pick Horde because Horde has the most damage potential. And if played properly, if played perfectly, you should always clear faster as Horde. But since we're humans, we have error and we don't and we make mistakes, Alliance is the clear choice. Like that it, it, it because of the wipe um uh what's the word? Wipe protection, uh and the buffs and the and the yeah, they're just it, it's it's the way to go for sure for endgame PvE, which is which is great. And that's a good thing, because I think um everyone always gives Horde the you know, with the best PvP racials or whatever, and blah blah, Wind Fury and all those things, but it's it kind of balances out, and that's the thing that's really cool thing yeah. about Classic because we won't see that ever again because in TBC there is no class specific uh, cl race, sorry, faction specific classes. So yeah, yeah. I, this it's it's a little easier for me to make an analogy to retail. Um, I'm I'm sure this exists in Classic as well too, but in retail there's like a lot of choices as far as like what legendary you're gonna pick and like what what talents you're gonna pick and I would always pick different things because it's like, okay, yeah, this is, this one's really great. If I'm playing that well, like, like this mm -hmm. Sims better, assuming I can hit all these buttons at the right time and, and group these things up perfectly. Whereas there might be better options if you make mistakes, for like, the reality it might be better for you to do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, um, so yeah, that was our progression and some discussion around the different topics, but we haven't had you on the show since Nax was out, so I kind of want to hear about y'all's just the story of your progression. Like, you know, mm. not, you know, everything, of course, but just like, where did you run into bumps? Where did you, you know, run I, into I things? I do want to hear, though, easier? even even before that, what prep going into Nax was like. Did yes, you have yes, a lot of definitely. prep going in? Please. Sure. Story so we practiced for an entire month on our own private uh, sandbox. Um it based on the mangoes private servers everyone knows probably at this point what that is it's you know all, all the popular private servers are built off of mangoes they had the nostalgia's core it's all it's all that information so it's not classic <laughs> so obviously there are inconsistencies but uh we wanted to go for week one clear that's what we did for every raid so well, except for mc because we weren't uh really kind of hardcore ish we're not we're not hardcore now but we're serious and so we did that. We got them all in. Uh, I was in charge of all the boss strategy because I uh, Nax is my favorite raid. Uh, I, I have a lot of experience with it on in Wrath. I've never done it on private servers. I never did it on vanilla, obviously, because I was like terrible back then. But uh, I know the fights very well because I remember um, all the mechanics from Wrath. Now the mechanics are some of them are different. They're Very different. different. They're, like definitely, four, they're definitely like, different. Yeah, we talk about four yeah. horse and like the back two bosses just go stand back there. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. They, they were stationary in, in Wrath. So I had to go back and research all the stuff. And it took me like a, a week to just go go through, look at the inconsistency between Wrath and Vanilla, learn them, and then be like, okay, guys, this is how we did the fights. And we went in for an entire month. And it took us the whole month just to progress through the raid on the PTR. Um, then we, we also tested Saf and a few other bosses when it was available on the actual classic PTR. Uh, remember though, they gave you buffs. So it was like, oh, I was yeah, like, guys, this is buffs. not how it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we down Saf on the PTR, the classic PTR. And I'm like, that was 200 free frost resistance. <laughs> you know, we got to wear our DPS gear. Like this is not how it's going to be at all. Right. And so we got in, and honestly, we got our ass whooped. I think we, we went in there kind of thinking that 
we did this on the PTR, we should be fine. And it wasn't the case. So we, we stumbled on Lothab. We stumbled on um, Four Horsemen. We stumbled on uh, basically all the end, you know, uh, bosses for each wing. Uh, Thaddeus, we had, a, we had, a, I think we had an issue originally because what the hell was it? Someone screwed up the thing, even though we practiced it, you know, um, you know, the rotating thing with the, with the plus and the negative, uh, someone mixed, mixed up, um, something else. I think the tank died immediately because we weren't pre-healing him because the damage is a lot spikier on, on live than it was on PTR. So overall Do you ever have issues where like your tank gets thrown like into the, <laughs> the Dude, other we column. We have one tank who is like seriously. I think Blizzard is just mad at him or something. But <laughs> yeah. our tank executive, he'll be standing in a spot I think feels right, and he just gets thrown into the goo instead of yeah, tank like swapping. The other platform. Oh, he'll, for he'll, the swaps. Yep, he'll yeah. get thrown. It's right the weirdest down thing. Into the huh. uh, so he is that and. I would probably say maybe a third of our Thaddeus kills. He'll disconnect when it throws him also. Oh, <laughs> or like he'll disconnect out on that phase. Yeah. And he doesn't disconnect anywhere else. So like we think it's yeah. something. Or <laughs> like an add-on or a weak or something's messing up. Because yeah, he, it's the weird. It's, yeah, he never dis disconnects ever. He disconnects on that fight multiple times now. I mean, it's like he's cursed for Thaddeus. And it was hilarious because he was late to Tuesday Raid, and he showed up right before we got to Thaddeus. And I was like, oh, God. Yeah, he, oh, that's going to happen again. But yeah, so, so the, the, and that's, a, the, that's another good point, is that there are inconsistencies between the PTR and the classic client was the trash is super, super hard on the PTR. But the bosses were actually a little bit easier. And it's funny because, like, you know how when you, when there's a tank swap on the mini bosses, uh, on the right-hand side, I'm not sure if this happens on the left because I'm a shaman, so I'm always on the right. But um, in the in the time where the only, this only happens in the first one, when the first swap happens, the mini boss doesn't know who the other tank is yet. So it immediately gets the next person on the high and kills them, right? So that 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 did not happen on the PTR. We weren't even prepared for that. So that was one of those things where Wait, the okay. PTR... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, are you talking, okay, if you're facing Thaddeus, you're talking on the right side? Yes. Okay, so right. that's oh, where I am. Melee usually goes. Every yeah, time, I don't think that's ever happened to us. Yeah, every time it swaps, the, the it mini boss the starts like running towards the ramps. I wonder if they're running towards no, the healers. It's no, running towards the not. healers. He's not. He's not. He, well, it's mana burning us. It's I, I understand. But yeah. on the right side, what's happening for us, and maybe this is different for yeah. you guys, he is running toward our other tank still. So the tank that got launched, until huh. until the new tank is landed, he starts running toward the ramp to get to the tank that flew off the platform. So he's still targeting. Yeah, so it's definitely so like corp, Like Corpse and Exec, he'll still be targeting the tank that got launched away, and he starts running toward the ramp. But luckily, he the other tank will land, and then he'll go back to the new tank for us. Interesting. So it never kills anybody. Yeah. Interesting. We have a totally different experience. So what happens with us? We have to be like, okay, if you're if you're top on the threat meet, if you're second on threat meter, you got a lip or something because you're gonna die, or put a shield on, or you know. And that's it's funny because every time it just whacks someone, you know. Uh, but wow. and then once the, once the game knows there's who the two tanks are, it never happens again, which is interesting. I I, I don't know. So that's something that you that they did not do in the PTR. Um, uh, another thing we did on the PTR, which was not a good idea, is that we are able to instantly give people every world buff. So every pull we had full buffs, which did not You're prepare right. us for a lot of the fights, which was a bad <laughs> idea. But we did that for AQ and it was fine. So we what? figured it'll be fine for this, but no, it, it wasn't at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> the fights in Nax are completely different depending on whether you have world buffs or not. Everything is different. The strategy is yeah. different, how much you can do, how much you can do this. And and Lothab was so hard because we did it with world buffs in the PTR or on our PTR. I keep saying the PTR on our sandbox. So we're like, this is going to be a breeze. And then we died on Hagen like the first night because we uh, we failed because the another thing is that the, the our sandboxes quadrants were different than the game's quadrants so yeah. we we died on hagen so we lost all our world buffs we got the low of them thinking it'll be fine and then no we couldn't get through it so 
Uh, honestly, the PTR experience this time honestly did not prepare us well. It, it prepared us, sure, but it didn't prepare us well. And that's another testament to a Nax being a really, really well does well designed raid is that there's still a lot of surprises. So it took us about two and a half weeks to progress this time, where it took us one for AQ. Um, and once we got it down, it was great. I mean, it was amazing. And you guys will feel this soon. It's just you beat the game, right? That's the, that's the <laughs> coolest feeling in the world. Uh, down in KT, you know, people getting gear they always wanted to get and couldn't get. We, you know, we've gotten two hungering colds drop so far. We've gotten um, wow. uh, two hammered twisting nethers drop. We've, you know, it's just it's crazy to get that gear. So, um, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, Saf was incredibly hard for us. We uh, we could not get her. Down. We still haven't got her down without buffs, and it's our goal to get I, this. Is, this week is our goal to get the whole raid down in one night. That's our goal. Yeah, this and week. I was trying yeah. to tell our guild last night, like guys, listen, this <clears> is <throat> the toughest boss in the game. If we down Saf, we're good to down KT. Yeah. Like, we're not. We're probably not going to one shot it, but we're good to down KT if mm -hmm. we can down Saf. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um. So yeah, it's 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 been amazing, and uh, um. Shout out to Eden on Scarum, my guild. It's it's uh, what a great group of people, and that was the whole point. Like the whole point of us playing classic was yeah, okay, yeah, to re-experience the game, to go back to a version of the game we we like better personally. And but the goal was to kill KT. That's been the primary goal like since day one, and getting that done is just it was just an amazing feeling. And you know, and talking to a lot of the TBC nerds in my in my raid, um. They've been saying, like, listen, Naxxas is hard or harder than every raid in TBC except for Sunwell. He's like, if we can do this, you know, we can do it. We can do it in TBC. And I didn't realize how I didn't realize Nax was that tough, to be honest, compared to TBC rating. Well, so and props yeah. to you guys. You did it with the same guild from start to end. And that's a testament to your host leadership. And it's a testament to ours too. Like our, yeah. our leadership has been good. And that's one of the big reasons that we're still going. And I, I just hold my breath every week, like just hoping we could get this done with everybody because I want it so bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I rating with the same fun. guild from start to finish is, is, a very unique experience i think and it's it's really right. awesome to be able to do and i think we're at the point now we just had to keep setting benchmarks for ourselves because i mean our first week we got like five bosses down six bosses down we had a long way of progression to go so just setting these benchmarks has been really good and like last night there this week we didn't have any progress but with just heart alone we saw we can clearly kill saffron down four people so we're like okay if we're full buff, we would have had this. Even if we just had heart, we probably would have had this if we had four more people. So now when people feel like, okay, we have progress to make, it's mm -hmm. better. If we went, if we ran our head against Saffron and only got 70% again, it'd be like, um, people are going to start doing? thinking about what their options are. That was, that was a rough time yeah. for us too. We got to Saff and we like would be in there and consuming and going and we see the boss's health like 85%. <laughs> and we're like, holy shit. We're you know what I mean? there. And, yeah. <laughs> And the heroes are like, I don't know if I can do that. You know, and it's one of those yeah. things where um, getting the Frost Resist pieces, uh, you know, it, it, the fact that Nax is built in a way where you have to get stuff to progress through other bosses is just so cool. Like, the fact that there's, like, huge upgrades from, like, the first shield you can get as a tank to, like, the, the last shield. And and, and um, same thing as a healer. There's healing, there's healing pieces that are like, oh, these are pretty cool. These are upgrades. And then you see the hammer, the twisting nether, and it's like, oh my god, this is so much better. You know, it, it's like, it's like two raids. It's like two raid tiers. You know, yep. it's right. so cool, so well designed. I can't. Say I think it's exciting. Yeah. This is the first raid that we've done where, like, we all got excited when we killed Cthulhu for the first time, right? Because we had wiped a couple times, and we were like, yes, we did it. But it wasn't like the excitement that we get when. Like the first time we killed Lothab and the first time you guys killed Four Horsemen and the first yeah. time, you know, like those are like, like, it's like a freaking party in the Discord. People are mm -hmm. so yeah. excited and so like, yes, we did it. And that's just something that I feel like we haven't felt up until now. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's real competition. Like, I mean, anything you do competitively, 
you end up feeling more excited about you know like if you play a shooter game it's like fun okay i want a match but if you play like on a team even if it's like a bowling league team if you win you're like yes we've done this and it's the same way like we're not just okay let's go kill Cthune. it's like even though we've killed lotheb before we've never done it on a tuesday and then even that second lotheb kill or third lotheb kill whatever that was was just like yes like we 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 didn't just kill it like oh we barely scraped by like we killed it like yep. everyone did we had so many people doing what they needed to do and we four did, horse. we know we're good at it yeah and four horse without buffs too or exactly without world like, buffs it, yeah, that, not, that's a huge uh that's a huge thing that, that that's yeah. big right that, that's we actually prioritize so we, the way we go through is we do plague first um because we we want to one face hagen we want to limit any deaths due to the dance so <clears throat> we go in we uh we blow up Noth. he's kind of a joke we then we go into the, the gauntlet and we get through that and then we we go in we blow up hagen uh, and then we go to lowest that we blow them up and then we go to military. So we want to, our goal every week is to get to four horsemen with our, still our one hour buffs. So right now we're at a point where we get there. Uh, they're just about to fall off minutes. We're, we're talking, <clears throat> we blow Thane up. That's the, that's our strategy. We just, we just annihilate Thane and then we, uh, kill Mograine and then do the back. So that's our strategy every week as we get once we get those two wings down it's like okay now we can breathe because um then we go to patchwork and patchwork even if you don't have rend and songflower it's still very very you know it's still big right you have all your other buffs uh and then we move through the red spider we don't you don't need to worry See, about we yeah we do that opposite we do patch first and then we do that wing, yeah and then we go and we really have not had problems with the dance since like week That's one good. or two, we on, we've only had problems with people getting sucked into the room. Yeah, they can't. Are yeah. Let, let's just let's <laughs> so just here, so this here's, up real quick. there's a little strategy yeah. here you can do. You know that you, you're out of what? combat when you get uh, teleported. Yeah. So we just stay there. We don't move, and we just blow up Hagen. Oh, yeah. so we don't have people go through the. Nope. So the people nope. that get teleported um... just stay. Just and then they live just, no matter what. Just okay. stand there. Don't move. But listen, that, because there we was have a time all of our healers will die. If they get sucked in, our healers are dead no matter what. Yep. And then half of our DPS make it through. And we've been trying to optimize this every week. Like, come on, like we gotta figure something out. But they could just right. stay there. Yep. But as they can't though all the time. Combat. They can't right, right. stay there all the time because like there was a time where it teleported three priests. And we're all sitting there, and we're like, "Shit!" Right? If you're killing, <laughs> if you're killing Hagen before the dance, this strategy is viable. If you don't, I don't know if it's viable. Right? We're not, um, we're not often yeah. bringing full world buffs to Hagen. Is the other yeah. thing we're not necessarily yeah. trying to kill him before the dance. So that is something that we can think about at least going forward too. Yeah. But the problem is, you say like, "Oh no, three priests got brought in." What are we going to do? But all three of you died when that happened anyway. Anyhow, so it is yeah. like it didn't matter. <laughs> That yeah, you tried we were to still able it. to kill Hygen, so maybe you just yeah. stay there and if, nobody else gets warped. If you can, so you're saying you I'm irrelevant. One, sorry, if you can <laughs> one phase Hagen, the only people, the only person taking the damage is the tank. So yeah. there's no reason to have you know 12 healers. So it's fine, uh, and that's what we do now. Uh, originally, we didn't know that. Again, this is another onslaught strategy. We didn't come up with this. So so onslaught. We we watched an onslaught stream, and I'm like, why aren't they moving? And then <laughs> What's that I. Mean? They just blew Hagen up in like X seconds, right? And they just they just went to low with it. And I was like, that that is an awesome freaking plan. Because yeah. our biggest problem with not going plague first is that we assume we're gonna lose a certain amount of people on Hagen no matter what. So right. it feels like a waste of world buffs. Like we're gonna lose like five people probably no yeah. matter what. But if we're going with world buffs, that might entirely change how we do that. That's really interesting. The way we do um, things right now is we go patchwork first because. We don't we've never even attempted them without like with any missing any world buffs. We've, we've done it with like a few missing world buffs, but I think we'd be OK with missing some. But we just want to guarantee that we also kind of need world buffs for Gluth. Like we need it like we mess up a lot there. We'll, uh, we'll like we can do it without world buffs, but w there I can't guarantee we won't wipe <laughs> like yeah. once or twice. We I haven't even done know it. what our we have a block on Gluth for some. Yeah. Reason. So since we still have two hour buffs on Gluth, what we do is. um uh, we actually kill them before decimate. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we end up doing. So for like, yeah. so 
really big distinction. Like we don't have rend, so like for us, the two hour buffs are really all we're expecting to for it's, people to have on yeah. any given boss to begin yeah. with. So yeah, we can do it before the decimate, and that's why we try to bring it. If we can do everything perfectly, I think what you're saying makes a lot of sense. For us, though, we worry, okay, we go plague. But then if we wipe on Lotheb, it's like, oh, we've really ruined our entire week. Yep. <laughs> because yep. Now, now we can't go do patchwork or we, now we can't do uh, all of the wings that we want to do. But in like a perfect scenario, that makes a lot more sense. And so right now we go uh, A-bomb to just finish it out with our buffs. And then we go military. And what we were doing was just killing the Gothic. Uh, because we were having some problems there, but now we can keep going and do four horsemen after that with our buffs gotcha. and then get that down every time. And that's going to make our lives easier. Yeah. Another tidbit for Loatheb is he, when you walk in the room, uh, your tank is facing a certain direction, which means Loatheb's facing a certain direction. Uh, mm -hmm. well, of course, all your DPS are behind Loatheb. What you can do to limit tank damage, I, I'm, I know this probably isn't a problem, but it just helps is move all of your healers behind the tank so Loatheb is looking at your healers. The reason why this is is because mm. every time he puts the one-minute debuff on your healers, he turns and gives them that debuff. The melee parry haste him, and when he turns, he hits your tank harder, usually. So um, it's just a little way of limiting your tank damage, uh, is to oh. move your healers behind... Like, I'm really having a hard time to explain this, but I think you guys know what I'm saying. No, yeah, no, I know. Yeah. I totally yeah. get it. So right yeah. now when we enter, our tank faces him away from the entrance of the room, and then everyone is just behind Lothar. That's how so we, that, that's yeah, what we do it, too. It yeah. is. It always scares me. Any mechanic where the boss targets somebody else scares the yeah. hell out of me, because this is like, why is he turning? <laughs> like, why yeah. is he going yeah. over yeah. the... Um, yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. We used to do that in, like, the healers and never, like, we would all be at the back of the room, right? Like, when you first walk in, yeah, tip. like if you're yeah. looking at it, like the tank would go and turn the bus around, and then we'd be like behind the tank or to the side of the tank. But then the spores started, I don't know why, but they started spawning at the front of the room instead of at the back of the room. Mm. It's just where Lotheb is. I think that's why Corpse has been pulling him a little bit to the back of the room. So now they spawn in, I think it spawns at the drain furthest from Lotheb. Mm. Yeah. yeah there's also another strategy that i don't care i'm just gonna say it so yeah, I, I think you know what i'm talking about hagen oh okay okay, okay. oh wait with the safe spot for hagen yeah, yeah, yeah. Spot you don't you you've never done it have imagine. you done it before yeah we, we do that every week um oh so, can you explain it to us then okay. a... so <laughs> oh no no it's not a safe spot sorry it's a it's a range thing okay so there is a safe spot strategy. We don't do that because that's that's yeah, a little that's, bit too risky. Yeah, that's a safe spot for the dance. To clarify, this is a safe spot where you're kind of standing on the platform, right? Kind of like on the corner. Right. And so then, the platform's uh, big enough for the tank, the tank Loatheb, at the very edge of it, and your entire range group can stand at the uh, diagonal from where he's tanking, and they're not in the mana burn range. So you never have to dance phase one. Which would be huge, which would be why yeah, you that would, would be... Camp. I mean, because we just get to stand there and just pump. Well, what the that would do is it's... help us ensure we kill it before the first teleport, because yeah. we are losing some amount of DPS when we're dancing. The reason why I think this is not an exploit is because they designed the range on this ability, and they designed the platform size. So, right. like, I I'm sorry, that that like you literally designed it wrong, in my opinion, right? That's it, not yeah. our fault at that point. So, and this is well... I mean, it's not well known, obviously, but it's something that's been on YouTube. Like, it's on YouTube, so it's not like, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I don't know if we're gonna Super get in trouble for chat. it, but you know, I don't, I don't know. I, but it's again, it's possible to do as long as your tank, you know, if you imagine it's a square, and say your tank's at the bottom right corner, and all your range are at the top left corner, uh, as long as he's tanking at the right spot, where low low that will be out of range of your of your range. And yeah, we've talked about it. trying it. I think our our biggest, my biggest fear is that we just wipe there. Like, we just mess it up where yeah. they're standing, and then that's that. That would be my only, like, concern. But doing it that way, obviously, would prevent any yeah. mistakes from happening. We're, we're lucky we don't lose too many people uh, in that first dance, but we lose some amount of DPS because we are just, like, running around. Right. We're not always behind him while he's being dragged. Sometimes... So, like when he's like casting something he'll like the tank will move but Tygen won't move and he'll stay in the other like quadrant for a little bit which is kind of a problem as well too 
Mm-hmm. Um, that's really interesting. Maybe we should let's give that a try next week, guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm dead. I'm dead. It's right. easy enough to where it didn't. We didn't wipe the first time we did it because yeah. we just the tank knew where he needed to stand. We watched the video like ten times and we were like, okay, you know. And got this. All right, and well, again, I have the you, video, you know, so I'll post yeah. it in Discord. <laughs> yeah, if you don't one phase it, you still have to do this. You still have to do the fast stand. Obviously. Yeah, which I mean, we we yeah. right now because we're not always bringing full full world buffs to plague, we're doing the fast dance no yeah. matter what right yeah. now. So anything we can do, I'm to really good at it. Better. I'm I'm actually really good at it too. Not to, to yeah, I mean we team. have we have a tank who does it a hundred percent of the time correctly, and he's marked, so everyone should be good at it because you just have to <laughs> hang out not. with him. <laughs> Listen, sometimes he gets tell he gets teleported and the and exec does a good job. Once, Has that happened that to you before? We our main tank, we had like a, a horrible week where everything went wrong in every possible way. So that was <laughs> the week where, you know, our tank is getting disconnected while getting thrown on Thaddeus. Um, some other weirdo stuff happened as well, too. But the worst thing was that our main tank, who was tanking Hygen, got teleported into the gauntlet room. <laughs> And First then he teleport. just started getting. He's the Hygen just started murdering DPS. Oh, really? Can the main tank be teleported? Yeah, so I didn't, we yes, figured so. out. We, we, we think can it's tell a 10%, you for sure. We, it appears to be like a 10% threshold where if somebody huh. ha, is within like 10% of the threat of the main tank, it will teleport the main oh, tank. Oh, wow. And we've, we've or it we can had him teleport the main tank. It's happened twice, though, that someone was like crept up on him. He didn't take threat, but then the main tank got teleported, hmm. and then we're just like, "What do we do?" Yeah, that's a that's an interesting one. We didn't have him come across that. So we that, had that at the end of like a night that was already going like not great, and we're just like, Damn. "Why? Why?" It was just one of those. Yeah. You're just like, "Okay, yep." Yeah, we had we had that this week. We had a we had a little off week this week, and it was a little demoralizing because this this current week that we're talking now was the week we wanted to one night next. Um. We had a little bit of a issue on trash. We pulled a second pack. We eighty percent of our raid died, uh, and then we just had a really bad night after that. Morale went down. We only got like eight bosses down that night. We came back the next night and finished it, but it was like it was just demoralizing. So this week we are trying again. One night, one night. That's that's our goal. One night. That's been our goal for a while now. So nice. And is that three hours? That would be three hours, and that would be Saf without world buffs. So that's that would be our first time. Yeah. All right, well, guys, you got that. We have we have run out of time. Other people have to take over the stream. Uh, we were gonna possibly talk some TBC, but I think it would be just wrong to talk this TBC talk without Def Camp. So maybe yeah. when Def Camp comes on, you can come back on too, Melderon, and that'd be great. Yeah, sure. And then I'd love to. like we could just kind of like tailor the episode more towards TBC instead of Nax. So is there any last thing you do want to say that you didn't get to get out? I, I mean, I'm sure there's a ton, but is there anything you really <laughs> want to say? Um, you can find my videos on Def Camp and Melderon TV. Uh, oh, and... no, no, no. We'll do that. Oh, well, yeah. okay, okay. No, I meant just um, any, like anything about Nax. Oh, anything about Nax. Um, you know, if you're still struggling, guys, just keep at it. Like, please. I mean, this is this. I'm sure you did this you got into this, this is one of your goals. Um, <clears throat> and you're not alone, obviously. You guys as well. I mean, us too. We have bad nights and it's keep going because this might be our only chance. We don't know if we don't know if a refresh is going to happen or not. So, yeah. Uh, other than that, just uh, um, shit, there's something else I wanted to say. Oh, shout out to Eden on Scarab, my guild. Yeah. Eden's, Eden's awesome. I love watching Def Camp streams and watching you guys go. And I wish we could take this a, a you know I wish we could take this for seven hours because we have a good time talking about it, but we can't. But we do want to end the episode with the add-on of the week. Ooh. Wow, I get an add-on this week. I'm very excited. So <laughs> <laughs> didn't do one last week, but this week, uh, pretty simple. It's a retail add-on that works for classic i don't know if it's a classic variant or if it's just literally the same one ported over but it's uh exorcist raid tools and it just allows you to uh what we're using it for in like the simplest thing it lets us see if people are using their their protection potions Which that's the biggest huge. thing for us it's so it's huge. letting us see like it, the you know it's letting us see who's using like their mongoose potions and stuff as well too but for us our main purpose is making sure people are shadow protection potions for Lotheb and then that they're frost protection potioning for uh, Saffron 
And uh, it's it's been a big help for us because what we were doing before was just checking everybody and hoping everyone was doing it. So that's what we're using for that. It does a million other things as well, too. That's useful. But that's what we're using it for. I'll keep it short. Definitely something to check out for your raid if you're having some problems with organization like we occasionally do. Yeah, it's a great add-on. I use it as well. Yep. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, it's just used because you'd be like, uh, people haven't popped. People try to be a little sneaky or maybe just forgetting. You know, you can remind mm -hmm. them, hey... Can't do Lotha without a shadow pot. Pre yeah, you definitely need to. And that's something that, real quick, is that just make sure people follow that consumable order because that's life or death if you don't, you know, because the healers can't heal everyone. They can only heal the tank. <laughs> yeah. Yep, it's yep. like the weirdest fight for healers. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at WC Reloaded. You could also follow the Mash Those Buttons Network at the Mash Network. We want your wow stories. We have a wow story to tell, but we'll be doing the wow stories almost for sure only when we don't have guests on. So we'll, we're we're going to table that one and we're going to tell it the next time we don't have a guest. So thank you for sending that in. If anybody else wants to send us another story, it's wcrpodcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to join our Discord, interact with the hosts, or any host on the Mash Those Buttons network, you can go to mash.gg slash discord. Also, we always need ratings and reviews. You guys have been killing it. Keep up the good work. All right. Now, where can we find everything that you do and all the awesomeness that you create, Melderon? <clears throat> sure. So, Def Camp and melder on tv so it's like the n percent def camp and melder on tv uh, on youtube uh just put it a, a couple i just put it like a tbc class kind of picking thing i put up a classic retrospective and now i have a new shaman guy coming out and then another video i'm working on as well so that's where you can find that uh, uh twitter is at def underscore mel tv and then uh twitch is twitch.tv slash def camp and then there's classic wild out live uh, which we're trying to repurpose for TBC as well, which is like a guide hub. It's, so yeah, yeah, it's I mean it's a super cool site, and I I will say one of my favorite videos of all of Classic has been your Classic retrospect. It felt like a true, it felt like a true look at what Classic was. It wasn't a hype a hype video. It was I mean it felt like you bared your soul in that video and I loved it. Thank you. Yeah. That's the, that was kind of the point. Um, you know, I, I've done these videos before, before I say that preface it before I'm saying, I try to do stuff that is more, you know, from the heart or, or really long guides. I, um, I can always make those videos that are kind of like, you know, 10 reasons for this, 10 reasons. I, I, and I made those videos before and I'm not bashing the people who do, but that's the type of content I do. It's I try to be more introspective and I try to do more like quality guides. That's 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 what I'm primarily do. So if you like that kind of stuff, then that's that's the place you want to check out. Yeah, it's it's definitely cool. Mel, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Mel Overwatch. Awesome. And where can we find you, Mr. Cognitive Pit? You can find me on Twitter at Cognitive Pit or on YouTube at youtube.com slash cognitive pit or in World of Warcraft on White Main slash who YIP. All my characters have yip in it. Find me. Come play with us. We are recruiting. We're going into Nax with thirty five every night. Uh, we had we had a listener and join. We're doing our guild. really good. Yeah, we 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 had a listener join our guild. We've talked about him a few times. He went from being a, a basically worse than Prebis or maybe at Prebis gear healer. He's geared up. He's got DKP. He's got sick weapons and gear. He's got T three on. Uh, he's he's part of the crew now, healing really great uh, with everybody. So if, if you're worried about that sort of thing, uh, you don't necessarily have to because we do need some bodies. Yep, and that's <laughs> you're a, better than our empty spot. <laughs> that's a shout out to Wiccan. He's been a great ad addition to the guild. Also, guys, I really want you to go check out Yip's YouTube channel because for his uh, his donation to the BlizzCon line. Um, what's it called the 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 comp the competition about storytelling well so let me tell you yip raps like he's a oh, rapper yeah. really I channel my in your i channel my kanye 
Yep, yep. It's so a, you definitely need to check that out. I almost use it as our uh, – maybe I'll use it as our – outro music for this week for the audio version i think i might just have to do that actually i'm gonna do that it's enjoy gonna the cringe as as we out for guys <laughs> enjoy All i right. have to see this i can't believe i have not oh, ridiculed you about this it's yet. so good it's so good all right well you can find me on twitter at blazon underscore bob that's b-l-a-z-z-i-n underscore b-o-b i sometimes I sometimes, you know, stream our raids. You can find that at twitch.tv slash blaze and Bob. All right, guys, we're out. It was another great episode. Thank you guys. Thank you everyone for coming. Mel Duran, it's always a good time to talk with you, brother. Yeah. Thanks for having thanks. me. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.